when we last left off, you guys had split from Hugo and leaving him in his hotel room to ruminate. Hulk. Hulk. <laughs> ruminate. <Yeah>. Hulk. <laughs> Plot. As you three decided to track down the members of Mars's order. Where's my D and D Beyond? There we go. I need to think of a name for that. I just realized I never did. For the order? Yeah. Uh, maybe call it the Order of the Lingering Death. That sounds a little too evil. Aren't they just grave keepers? I thought they were grave keepers. Yeah, we are. <laughs> like, that's a little too on the nose, Lundo. How about the... Um, why don't you name them the... Um, order of the... Uh, the, 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 um, I don't know. Jupiter and the sexy undertakers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not a cult. <laughs> the undertakers. The coffin binders. Yeah, you can you can figure out a name whenever you feel. We'll, we'll workshop it. Yeah, you'll workshop it. <laughs> I like the idea that Octavian comes up with the name. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like Octavian is just kind of like sitting there after we introduce him to our order, and then my dad overhears him going like, "Wow, that name sucks. You should have called it something like this." And he's just like, "Damn, I should have." <laughs> Damn it! Fuck. <laughs> Kill him God, and take the right. idea. <laughs> But, uh, that, you? you guys had <laughs> split up from Hugo, leaving him in his hotel room, and you decided to track down the members of Marge's order that you heard were in the vicinity. You yes. asked around and discovered that they were in the playground, the brothel district. And when you arrived, you found them uh, more or less dealing with what they thought was an undead problem. Yes. A man who, by all appearances, appeared undead, but after some probing by Octavian discovered that he still retained some semblance of sentience. You argued for his life, in which he eventually asked to be killed, to which one of the... <laughs> one of the member, the leader of the group, did, was easily able to accomplish. He then apologized and invited you all to dinner as a way of... Uh, as a way of forgiveness, placating I suppose. Placating my wrath. Yeah, placating your wrath. You went to dinner at a nice restaurant in which you all were poisoned by them. Except I for Octavian, that. because he does not eat. But my son. Yeah, Gus Gus was a victim of the poisoning. Oh no, is Gus just... Gus dead? No, no Gus Gus did... is alive. I did just remember we planned on starting this session by awakening Gus Gus. Yes. So, uh, with the quick action of Octavian and the Charm Person spell, he diffused the situation, rounded up, uh, or not rounded up, uh, uh, treated his compatriots, and no, they were no longer paralyzed, and confronted the three members, who revealed that Mars's father had specifically requested that they, by any means, get Mars home. Even if it meant killing his compatriots or what have you. You sent them on their way. And I believe that's where we left off. <sighs> yeah. So, you guys can make your way back to your mm -hmm. hotel room if you'd like. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Yeah, make my way. Make my way. Okay, it's about... By the time you arrive, it's about 10 at night. Does that... Does, does anyone else hear power tools? Yeah. <laughs> I don't hear anything. I, don't hear <laughs> I, I, I You're making me... I'm not going crazy, am I? <laughs> like... No, I um, was just... I was oh, you I genuinely <laughs> thought you were hearing. Oh my, my bad. <laughs> like I was like, I'm not hearing power tools. What's going on? 
<laughs> but no, um, you do hear a lot of commotion coming from Hugo's room. I like to imagine this is one of those like fancy casinos where the hotel rooms like overlook the uh, casino area. It's it's not too fancy. It looks like it's you know seen it's been here for a very long time. It's nice, a lot nicer than some of the inns and taverns you've stayed at, but it's not like the Ritz or something like that. I don't know. It's not like the courthouse from Persona 5. I've never <laughs> seen that. <laughs> I only okay. Persona 5 is not that good. <gasps> <laughs> I'm going to my room before this bomb gets any more deadly. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of stuff I have to do tonight. If you hear any weird chanting coming from my room, just know... That it's some sort of dark magic that I'm going to upheave from the deepest, lowest, darkest uh, pits of the um, the weave. Mars just kind of just like rolls his eyes and goes, "Okay, have fun." <laughs> I'm gonna go sleep off to any lingering effects of this poison. I think I'll do the same as well. All right, you two retire to your separate rooms. Octavian, what would you like to yes. do? Yes. Uh, all right. I will place the. Uh, I will go into my room. Uh, remove my mask. Get Gus Gus out of my head. Place okay. him on the ground. Be like, all right, Gus Gus, my child, my son, my prodigy, my my pride and joy. Um, tonight I will pull the gem out. Tonight, you ascend. You achieve, you, you you become made privy to a higher truth. I'm picturing the creation of Adam. Yeah, but with a mouse and a skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> so I will begin the, um, the awakening ritual. Okay. Um... It's an eight-hour casting time. <laughs> That'd be, that would be... It's about ten now. So, about six a.m. But I don't sleep. Yeah, you but don't I won't sleep. get a long rest. Because you won't get I'll a long rest, no. this. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to sit down. And I guess it's not a normal way of doing the spell. So, I guess I'm going to do it in the most Octavian way possible. Uh, I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna place. Uh, yeah, are there two right. chairs and uh, like two like nice like, lounging chairs? There's there's a nice table set of table and chairs in the corner. All right, I am going to. Um... <laughs> we all just hear through the walls. Rats, rats, <laughs> we're the rats. He's not a rat. He's a mouse. I um, he was, I'm, gonna... I thought, I'm pretty sure he's, he's a rat. No, he's a mouse. That's why his name is Gus Gus. Um, because if he was a rat, I would have called him Remy. Um, oh, I'm going to put Gus Gus in one of the chairs. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm going to put, I'm going to sit in the other chair across from him. I'm going to put on the, the, the like table between us, the gem. I'm going to pull out a piece of paper and I'm going to be like, so Gus Gus, please tell me about yourself. And for the next eight hours, I'm going to have a very in-depth, uh, 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 interview with Gus Gus. And that is how I will perform the awakened spell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so eight hours go by. You all, yes? No, that's it. Eight hours. Okay. Eight <laughs> hours go by. The rest of you who are going for a long rest get a long rest. Yay. Octavian, you do not get one. But after nope, eight hours, fine. you feel the magic kind of imbue itself into Gus Gus, and you see a flash in his eyes and a, a new awakening of sorts inside of him. Yes. Yes! Now, does this give him the ability to speak? Allow me to read you what the spell does. Yes, please do. <laughs> I can see. After I spending the casting time tracing magical pathways within a precious gemstone, you touch a huge or small beast or plant. The target must have either no intelligence score or an intelligence score of three 
or less. The target gains uh, an intelligence score of 10. The target also gains the ability to speak one language you know, which is common. Um, actually, yeah, common. Um, one language that I know. Uh, if the target is a plant, it gains the ability to move. Uh, the jam chooses the statistics appropriate to, oh, if it's an awakened plant or if it's an awakened tree. Uh, an awakened beast or plant is charmed by you for 30 days or until you or your companions do anything to harm it. When the charmed condition ends, the awakened creature chooses whether or not to remain friendly to you based on how you treated it while it was charmed. Okay. <clears throat> so he does not gain the ability to speak. No, no, he can he speak. Does. Yeah. He, he, he can speak one language. What language? Common. Common? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you cast a spell. Yes. And you wait and go, you see Gus yes. kind of just survey the room for a moment, his eyes beguiling Father. this new uh, intelligence. Father. Father, I crave <laughs> violence. Yes, yes! <laughs> and he kind of looks to you and he just... Can a mouse smile? Yeah, they can smile. Okay, then he smiles. <gasps> My son. <laughs> tell me, tell me. What is it? He just says, hey, he Scott, said, Marty, I can talk! Yeah. <laughs> I crave blood! Blood! Marty, blood I've turned myself gods. into a mouse! <laughs> a mouse the blood gods. No, he's chaotic good. Oh, chaotic yeah. good mouse. Oh, boy. Yeah. He just so says thank Mickey. you. Huh? So he's Mickey Mouse. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Gus Gus, yes! Together we will create such beautiful works of art. I will... Uh, uh, he's been chewing on that magic wand I stole from... Uh, um, so essentially we talked about this out of game, me and Logan. He is now my sidekick. Uh, he is the spellcaster mage sidekick. And because we're all level 10, he becomes a level 10 mage sidekick. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the cool thing about sidekicks, like, let's say we're playing D&D &D and, like, your child wanted to play too, but the game was just a little bit too complicated for them, but you still wanted them to play. You can make them a sidekick character because essentially it's, mo it's like a monster stat that can level up. Um, and it has, like, the more basic kind of uh, stat sheets and how to play it. Um, it's basically but... baby's first D&D. Exactly, yeah. Um, so with Gus Gus, he's, a, he's my sidekick. So he can cast, like, minor spells. Uh, actually, no, my mistake. Because he's level 10, he can cast up to level 5. He also knows oh, the spell what? Fireball and right. Fly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I like to imagine that he just takes out that magic wand he's been chewing on, stands yeah. on it, and rides it like a skateboard to fly. Yeah. Kick flips. Um, <laughs> the only thing I is mean, so that. I like to imagine that he's whittled it down into like a, a Gus Gus shaped wand, like sized wand. It's more of like a quarter staff for him now. So, yes, he's a sidekick, but also all combat encounters are now prepared for that. Yes, he can now be added to the combat. Yes. Yes. He can get fucked up. I'm an Ava! Because <laughs> oh he my lives in my God. head! <laughs> Mars. <laughs> no, Hugo sitting on the table. Get in the skeleton, Gus Gus. <laughs> yeah, get in the fucking skeleton, Gus Gus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes! Um... <laughs> So, yes, he has empowered spell. Choose one school of magic. Whenever the spellcaster casts a spell of that school by expending a spell slot, the caster can add its spellcasting modifier to the spell's damage roll or healing roll. Yeah, uh, because he has all these, like, I'm going to go with evocation because all of his spells that he has on hand are all evocation spells. Okay. So, yeah, he's a, he, he practices evocation. It's, he, gets that, he gets that from Hugo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, you will control him. And then, yes. I guess I'll speak for him. Yes. Excellent. Gus, Gus. Yes! 
does it feel like? What is it like being given such beautiful sentience? He just kind of looks around and goes, it's different. It's much different. Yeah. I'm not as hungry as I used to be. Oh. Well, it's fine. Now, we can... We can bring such beauty to this world, Gus Gus. You by my side. He goes, excellent. Yes, you can also still... You can keep living in my head, though. He... He says, I, I, I enjoyed that. And he crawls back up your arm and into your eye socket. Yay! I oh clap. Yay! God. He can cast fireball through your through eye Through my socket. eye! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining. <laughs> okay, we're in the middle of a fight. You just sudden, and then you turn around and you see a clown and he just goes. <laughs> no one needs to know he's in there. <laughs> and you're just like, and then Octavian says something stupid like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um. <laughs> <laughs> he can't cast. We've taken away his thing. My eye starts like shooting bullets out. They're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> you fool. Your secret weapon. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'll walk into, uh, after the eight hours, I'm going to go into Mars's room, kick the door, like kick, kick open the door. Give me a strength check. <laughs> Oh god. Here we go. <laughs> oh, you get a one and break your leg. Sixteen! Oh. <laughs> a total of sixteen? Yes. With a minus one, I got a sixteen. Holy shit. You yeah. you walk up and in your in your excitement you kick the door as hard as you can. Now is this the outer door that leads to his room? Oh no, the one that connects both the of them. The adjoining. Rooms. Okay, good to know. Yeah, yeah. It flies open and you see Mars. Mars. Uh, oh yes. Mars uh, jumps out of the, out of his bed, startled. <clears throat> Mars, I have, would like someone. I would like you to meet someone. Mars just kind of looks around and is just like, "Did you bring over another one night stand?" No, better. I'm going to uh, hold hold my hand up to my eye. <laughs> I'd like for you to meet the new and improved Gus Gus. Gus Gus squirms his way out of your eye socket. Hello, he, Father. <laughs> he just kind of sits there on your, on your shoulder and says, uh, how do you do? Oh, you learned ventriloquism? No, this is him. He's speaking. <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's sentient now. You hear Gus Gus kind of go, that hurts. He's ascended. What hurts? What hurts? To think that, that assumed you did yeah, to, assume, to assume that I'm not speaking for myself. Uh, yes, he's quite intelligent. Oh, Mars gets up and walks over to Gus Gus. Apologies. He's quite intelligent. <laughs> yes. What's his intelligence it's score? 18. Eight, he's smarter Jesus. than Mars. <laughs> yeah, it's because he's because he's technically a level 10. <laughs> he's quite intelligent. My God, he's the same intelligence as me. Yeah, <laughs> he's also smarter than you, he's, Octavian. He's seen. It's fine. It's fine. It's what I. It's what a. It's what a parent it's wants what, in a child. It's nice to meet you. I hold out my like hand or finger to shake his tiny paw. He, he, he places it in there and gives it a nice shake. He is our secret weapon against the world, Mars. <laughs> They'll look at him and see the most beautiful thing in the world. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting you to actually figure out how to ascend, ascend Gus Gus. Yes, of course I did. I had to. You hear Gus Gus kind of clear his throat and say, um, if I may, I do have some business I wish to attend to. What is your business, my dear well, beautiful child? Last night I was poisoned. Oh, you want revenge? Yes. Oh, oh my God, yes. he is our son. Yes. Oh my God, he takes out. I'm gonna grab. Uh, I'm gonna hold my hand out and like put my arm, like like hold uh, Mars's uh, arm with my other arm as I like hold Gus Gus out in front of us and we like. He's our. He truly is our child. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mark just kind of like puts his hand in his head and is just like, oh my god, he really is. I'm crying. I... Yes. Yes, my son. We can get the most intelligent for all of five minutes and he already thirsts for blood. He already thirsts for revenge and vengeance. Yes, of course. He goes, well, when the time comes, I would like my revenge. But for now, yes. I will retire. And he climbs back <sighs> inside your head. Okay, all right, Mars, make a memo. We have to get him a tiny little wizard hat. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I've been up all night since 8 o'clock. Since 10. Uh, or for eight hours from since 10. I'm a little woozy. You don't need <sighs> sleep, though. I Yeah, but I still need to, like, rest. My beauty sleep. It's called beauty sleep. That on occasion, you hear clink, clink, <laughs> clink. <laughs> What is that sound? I've been hearing it all night, and I don't know what it is. You know how it... How... Isn't that coming from Hugo's room? I think it might be. I don't want to get into... I don't want to be... You know, Hugo does whatever he... Whatever, you know, gets his rocks off. I don't want to... He did throw a bottle at you last time we tried to talk to him. I know. Well, maybe I'll just... Have... And now you have precious cargo. I tap your head like I'm like I'm tapping a pregnant woman's belly. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you hear a faint. I'm trying to sleep in here. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I'll telekinetically speak with him, being that he's inside my head. I'll be like, "Us guys, I have a question. Would you like me to like get like doll furniture and move it into my skull for you? Would that be more convenient? <laughs> would you like like a nice bed and futon?" He goes, "That would be amazing." Yes, uh, I'll see if I can get you like a tiny book. Oh, you're gonna need tiny books <gasps> and a desk and a table. <gasps> oh and my god, rack. and a hat rack. God, I'm a ho you're a homeowner. What are we yeah. gonna do? What are we gonna do with all of that once we like turn you into a human again? Oh, uh, we'll just move it out. It'll be fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, we should probably go check on Hugo. We give Gus Gus a tiny eviction notice. I'm sorry, Gus Gus, but I need this for my brain. I <sighs> never needed it before. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to Gus uh, Hugo's room. Be like, Hugo, I'm coming in. Clink, Clink stops. <laughs> you hear footsteps. Opens the door. What? Hi, Hugo. Um, just wondering, wanted to know, uh, I'm going to hold up. Gus Gus would like you to meet Gus Gus. We've met. No, 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 no. You haven't met the new and improved <laughs> Gus Gus. Gus Gus does a little bow and he says, uh, my name is Gus Gus. You've known me for a while now, but things are different. Mm, congratulations. <laughs> Hugo just like turns around and just goes back, <laughs> goes back to what he was doing. <laughs> He's bore witness to a miracle, and yet this is all of his reaction is? My god! <laughs> this is our son, Hugo. Yes, he's he's been made privy to a higher truth. He's ascended. Yes, and I said congratulations. Uh, what are you making in here? All kinds of things. You see, like, schematics of things. We're not going to be able to get the Mark safety just, like, looks the over story. to the corner. Is the gun out? The gun is out, yes. Is that a gun? Yes. Where did you get a gun? I bought it. From? Well, this is a black market area, so I bought it from the black market. From Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, that's good to know. We have some exciting news, uh, Hugo, from last time. You weren't at dinner. We managed to find out that uh, uh, Hugo's father, sorry, not Hugo's father, Mars's father is... Uh, kind of hunting him down, kind of. So after we figure out what we're going to... After we solve this uh, iron solution problems here in town, we, uh, we're we going to make our way to... Uh, back home to Hugo... Or to... Oh my God. To Mars's place and possibly fuck up uh, his whole family line. Also, I have a sneaking suspicion that the reason I am the way I am on Deadwise is because of Mars's mother, who is apparently a necromancer. Doesn't that, doesn't that go against what you do, Mars? Yeah. That, that was a whole thing, dude. 
Last night I had a sort of a whole drunken epiphany about it. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Or the night before. Where is your fam Where is yeah. your family? Where are you from? Uh have have you made a city for that? Didn't you live in the mountains? I thought you were monastery. Didn't you come from a monastery or was it a manor? I personally Mars and his family lived in a manor. Mm. And then they just and there was a sort of church nearby that they gathered for worship in. Mm. How do you feel about burning down your childhood home? I fantasized about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes we need to go check on Thorhinge there's a pit where my dad used to dangle me in a basket and make me kill undead in it hmm oh, the religious trauma we'll fix well, it we'll, 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 we'll make you <laughs> what exactly is left to do here in this city well we have to destroy the other section of um, the Arth, uh, iron solutions isn't yeah isn't iron solutions there's another arthur sin here right yes that's what you gathered no uh, yes, the title we have to kill him or at least since we've never met this one them. i won't be able to yes. be able to track him down the only reason there were two in this city i believe is because the arthur sin we originally were hunting ran here to hide well getting on the turf of the one that was already here we just need to find their base and just destroy it. It's good to know that there's no loyalty, it seems. Hmm. We need, I'm, well, because when I was talking to the... Uh, well, sorry, not really talking. When I was traumatizing the uh, his sister, um, I heard her say something along the lines of she thought that this attack or incursion was because of the other Arthur Sin here in town. Oh, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, so which makes me think that it's quote-unquote commonplace for there to be kind of some infighting, especially if someone's stepping on someone else's toes. Hmm. This is just like Yakuza. Sure. <laughs> um, we need to go check on Thorhinge. He got, he got poisoned last night, too. Oh. Yeah, I'll go to Thorhinge's room. Knock on the door. Thorhinge! Hello? Yeah, I slowly get out of bed. And, like... <laughs> and I do uh, open the door. And you do see his kind of like a bed... Kind of like bed feather hair, I guess? Yeah. It's called. <laughs> that so poofy like kind of feathery. You see like a little dent in his head. Like puff dent. He's like, yeah. Good morning. How are you feeling? Still weird. How about we just take this day as like a personal day and we can just kind of recuperate from yesterday? I think I like the sound of that. All right. Maybe we'll, yeah. I'll have room service brought up to the room for you, Thorhinge. You do that. I'm going to do some scouting. Okay. You I'll, go do some scouting. I'll go with Hugo. I have a question, Mars. I potentially have answers. How far away is your home? Would you say that it's nighttime, or would you say that it's relatively daytime with where we are currently located? Um, well, honestly, I don't know if... Uh, we haven't really made any plans for where... Or at least I haven't been talked to about any plans for where the town I came, we come from is. I All asked this... Because all we know is that, now. like, all we know right now is that, like, we had already been traveling for at least a few months mm. when we first got to that flying city. So do you think that they're in another time zone, possibly nighttime at this moment? They very well could be on the other side of the continent from us. Ooh. Well, if you guys are going to do some scouting, you go, and you're going to take some well-deserved sleep... I'm going to dream. All right. Okay. Yes. You do that. <clears throat> yes. Um. 
Yes. All right. All right, let's get going, Hugo. All right. All right. I'm going to go back to my room. Okay. <laughs> you retire to your room. Mm hmm. You hear a slight snoring from Gus Gus. Ah, uh, yes. But uh, Hugo and Mars, you guys depart from the casino. It's about 6 20 in the morning, so the sun is just barely peeking up. Excellent. But where would you like to go for your scouting? Probably want to go to, like, the worst kind of bars with the worst people and, like, find information about Iron Solutions. Easily enough. Give me an investigation check. Oh. I'm good at that. I'd also just like to say that for this particular investigation, Mars sort of just puts his armor on underneath his, like, commoner's clothes. Okay, easily enough. So that he's not drawing too much attention being a priest in the shady district. <laughs> Let's see. I got a 17 plus 8, so that's 25? Oh. Okay. So, I got a 7. You head into the grasp, the slums of the city. There's many bars you can choose from, but most of them are just opening for morning. But you do find one that was open all night, and inside you find maybe three or four drunken people just absentmindedly speaking. You enter, okay. and they kind of like give, they shoot you a look and then go back to what they're doing. Uh, do I catch what they say at all? Absolutely. Give me a perception check. Ooh, that's not so great. Uh, 11. 11. Mm -hmm. You don't catch their conversation. They seem to, they were, they seem to stop the second you walk in and whatever they were talking about, they've changed the subject. Okay. Um, Hugo's going to go up to the bartender. All right. And <laughs> loudly ask about Iron Solutions and, like, where their whereabouts is. All right. You see, he's kind of, you know, getting some drinks ready, getting some bottles from the back, and he sees you. And he, at first, he's smiling, but when you mention Iron Solutions, you see his demeanor kind of shift. And he goes, mm -hmm. uh... <laughs> Never, never heard of them. Sorry. And he <laughs> he hurriedly goes into the back room as quickly as he can. Hmm. He does come back out about thirty seconds after, though. And he kind of he kind of pours you a drink and slides it to you, and uh, he says, uh, "On the house." <laughs> <laughs> Did he come out with a new bottle? Oh yes, God. brand new bottle. Notice? He he. It was an unopened bottle that he cracked open just for you. Uh huh. Um. <laughs> Hugo is going to fake drink it and just like pour it over his shoulder <laughs> like a shot. Give me a sleight of hand check. <laughs> Couldn't I just like press the digitation the drink away? You can. I think, I think I have that spell. If you, oh yeah, shit! If you have the spell, you can. Uh, I got a total uh, of nineteen. No, nineteen. You, yeah. in one quick motion, pretend to chug it as his back is turned, and you just flip it over your shoulder, yep. hitting the floor behind you. Well, no, I, I like, I just like it's kind of like a, an emotion of like I down it and then like I slam the glass back on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> like a shot sort of situation. I know. I'm saying the liquid goes behind you. Oh, the liquid. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you, 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 for all intents and purposes, he believes you took the drink. But he eventually turns back around and goes, uh, and he kind of leans in and goes, uh, I, I don't have the collection money on me, but if you just tell, if you just wow. tell them to wait a little wow. bit longer, I'll, I'll have the funds. Mars leans Hugo's... in and is like, ooh, you're another one who's under their thumb. Uh, Hugo sighs like, I'm not here to collect your money. 
He goes, you're not? No, I'm not with Iron Solutions. I'm here to destroy them. You see, I'm looking for them. You see his eyes kind of light up. He goes, wow, uh, that's great. Um, he goes, that. I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure where they're located, but uh, I mean, they always... are you expecting a collection today? He goes, uh, no, it's any time now. I I don't. They just show up when they please, take my money and and leave. But uh, if you're looking for them, your your best bet is somewhere here in the grasp, in maybe the warehouse district. I I overheard the last time they came in, they were talking amongst each other said they needed to get back to the to the warehouse that's all i got he goes, warehouse but, yeah they how didn't many warehouses are around here he goes, oh, lots i mean this is you know the warehouse district so yeah and as he says that you you hear someone shout from behind and you turn around and you see one of the gentlemen had gotten up and slipped on the puddle of uh liquor i toss <laughs> Yeah, and he's he's on his back, just kind of like grunt, grunting and staring at the ceiling, and the bartender goes, oh, "I've I've said too much." Um, <laughs> but if you're really here to get rid of Iron Solutions, he goes, "Drinks on the house," and he goes back to he goes to help the gentleman who slipped. <laughs> uh, I suppose we can wait around Mars, see if anyone shows up. <sighs> Need a meal anyway. All right. Uh, <laughs> you wait around. A couple hours pass and more people filter into the tavern. And eventually, um, do you take a table or do you sit at the bar? We'll take a table. We'll take it like, um, if there is like a corner table available, so we see who keeps, like, they don't exactly see us right away, but we can see who's, uh, exiting and entering. And hopefully close to the bar so we can eavesdrop on anybody who could be collecting money. All right. Um, what Hugo will say to the bartender is like, um, if they come and they come to the bar, we're going to be situated in the corner over there. Give us oh, a signal of some kind. I have a perfect signal for you. If the If a collector comes in, take whatever you're holding at the time or just grab a bottle or a glass and tap it to the counter three times. He goes, I can do that easily enough. Good. So you guys wait for an hour, two hours. The bar starts to filter out again from the early morning. The people getting off their night shift are leaving. Um, and eventually you see entering uh, a little red cobalt. Oh. <laughs> More cobalt. <laughs> he kind of walks over to the bartender, and it takes him a few minutes to get onto the stool, but eventually he does. A few minutes. <laughs> He's very short, and they are very tall. But he eventually gets up there, and then he begins talking with the barkeep. You see the barkeep kind of look a little confused before he actually points in your direction. And you see the cobalt kind of turn and look at you and get a big smile on his face as he heads over. Um, and he kind of he kind of he walks up to the table and he, he does a little bow and he goes, ah, "Nice to meet you. My name's Pockets." Pockets. Pockets. Oh, oh. that's out My of character. Do Mars have... doesn't say that. <laughs> okay. I was gonna say. Yes. Yeah. But he comes up and he says, uh, my name is Pockets. Um, I was hired by uh, Firemane, you know, the owner of the casino. He said to uh, find you to, well, he said he, <laughs> no offense, but he's been having you tailed. Um, but he asked me to find you because I need a little help. You need help? With what? He goes, well, I'm a map maker by trade. Mm-hmm. And I've been trying to get into the Oasis. It's like this underground portion of the city. It's where all the water comes from. And I've been having a difficult time. The Yun T won't let me in. And I've been trying my hardest to get in. Why not? Well, they're very superstitious and they don't like... They don't like outsiders. 
And he okay. goes, but Firemane said, you, your group, I expected more of you, would be able to help me get in. And in exchange, I would give you my map of the city, which does reveal the location of Iron Solutions. I've had the displeasure of meeting with them. Uh, oh, interesting. What do you need to get into the Oasis for? Because I just need to map it. That's all. I, that's what I do. And they just won't let you do that? They just won't let me in, no. N not even with, like, an escort? No. I've gone with some of Fireman's men, and they've always chased us off. Hmm. Yeah. How many of these Yuan Yuan-T are we talking here? Maybe it's we a... could... Go ahead. I was just going to suggest, maybe we could just go get Octavian, and he can just, like, use his fancy words and get them to just escort the kobold around to make a map. Yeah, we're probably going to need him. He goes, but I... Fireman said you were interested in Iron Solutions, and I I know where they are, but I will only trade if you can get me into the Oasis. No, All that's right. definitely valuable information. We'll just need to get the rest of our group first. He goes, that's fine. Yeah, let's, let's go back. And he kind of like... He hops up into the booth and sits next to you and he pulls out a map and he goes, I'll just be here drawing just when you get the chance. Come find me. I don't have anywhere else to go. All right. I, uh, Does Iron Solutions show up at all in this bar? Uh, After maybe like three hours, no one has shown up. Hmm. You right. get the feeling that they might, after the last time you intercepted some of their goons, they might be playing it safe. Because mm. you... I go up to the bartender and tell him we we have to we have to leave for now. Send a message to these room to one of these rooms in the uh, what was the casino's name again? Uh, do, 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 do. uh, Golden Claw Casino. To to the these rooms in the Golden Claw Casino. He goes, no problem. Uh, if I if I see Iron Solutions, now should I give them the money I owe them, or should are you gonna deal with that? Or we're gonna deal with that for okay. now. For now, just give them the money. And just if... stall them. Stall them if you can. He goes, no problem. S somebody's calling for me. I'll be right back. You're fine. You guys head back to the casino. Yep. Uh, Octavian. Let's go to you yes. now. You would like yes. to cast the dream spell? Yes. How Ooh. long do I have? Because the dream spell, it takes one minute to cast, but I can be in that dreamlike trance state, uh, for, like resting for eight hours. They left at six. They waited uh -huh. there for three or four hours. So you'd have about okay. four hours max. Uh, so I don't get a full rest. Damn yeah. it. <sighs> um... Hmm. I will still cast the spell. Okay. Because I can emerge from the trance at any time. I just won't get the long rest. Okay, easily enough you cast the spell. Yeah. Who is your intended target? <laughs> Mars's mother. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. In the dream, I can appear any way I want. All right. Yeah. First off, how uh, would you like to appear? Hold on, let, hold on one moment. The spell shapes the creature's dreams. Choose a creature known to you as the target of the spell. The target must be on the same plane of existence. Uh, creatures that don't sleep, such as elves, cannot be con contacted. Um, you or a willing creature you touch enter a trance-like state, blah, 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 blah. If the target is asleep, the messenger appears in the target's dream and can converse with the target as long as they remain asleep. Though... Oh, sorry. Through the duration of the spell, the messenger can also shape the environment of the dream, creating landscapes, objects, and other images. The messenger can emerge from the trance at any time. The target recalls the dream perfectly upon waking. And the target is awake. Uh, when you cast a spell, the messenger knows it uh, and either can and either end the trance and the spell or wait for the target to fall asleep, at which point the messenger appears in the target's dreams. Uh... You can make the messenger appear monstrous and terrifying to the target. If you do, the messenger can deliver a message of no more than ten words, and then the target must make a wisdom saving throw on a failed save. The echo of a phantasmal of the phantasmal monstrosity 
spawns a nightmare that lasts the durations of the target's sleep and prevents the target from gaining any benefits from a rest. In addition, they also wake up and take 3d6 psychic damage. Okay, Holy so... Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> what would you like to do? Um, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I'm going to cast the spell. Is she asleep right now? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, her dream is just going to be this unending abyss uh, with like a like shallow, almost re- like a reflective watery surface that she's standing on. Mm-hmm. Like she's standing on a, like a wet mirror. Okay. Uh, but it just goes on for infinity into the, into the void. Um, and I'm going to make myself appear as like just this unknowing creature just just beyond her like view just like in the darkness she just can't see because you know i'm just beyond her uh uh, you know perspective and i'm contacting your mom with the dream spell oh (laughs) yeah uh what was your mom's name um i was still workshopping that i'm thinking uh juno I'm thinking Juno because oh Juno okay yeah my, since my dad Juno, is Juno, yeah and I'm Mars all right so yeah uh, yeah I'll be like so if I if I appear as the monstrosity um, I have to use ten words okay so let me see here what are my ten words um. I'm going to say Ju. Uh, I have been waiting for you. Uh, uh, no, um, The door is open. That's the ten words. All right. And then the uh, she must do a wisdom saving throw. Total of fourteen. She fails. All right. So she's stuck in the nightmare. Uh, yeah. So for the duration of the uh, sleep, which is eight hours, um, she will be subjected to the phantasmal monstrosity. Uh, nightmare. Um, so yeah, I will say the door is open, and then for the rest of the dream, she's just going to be being like gnawed on, bitten, and chewed apart by creatures in the darkness that she can't see. She can only see bits and pieces of them as they take pieces of her body. Okay. Never yeah. cross Jesus. Octavian. Huh? Never cross Octavian. Yeah. Now you're going to send a dream spell to that kid in the fourth grade who stole your lunch money. Yeah. Hey, Scott, remember me? You called me gay. Well, guess what? You were right. Time to die. (laughs) Time for you to have the gayest erotic dream ever. Oh, my God. She's going to take 13 psychic damage. Okay, good to know. Now, do you wake up or do you come back to consciousness or do you stay in the dream with her? Uh, I, I will just stay in the dream until I am awakened by my friends that come to get me. <laughs> you hear a yeah. loud knocking at your door. But she stays in the dream for the duration. I can leave at any time. Okay. Just good. To yeah. Know. Also, she will be, uh, this is something she can't forget. She remembers this dream when okay. she wakes up. Yeah. She, she can recall it perfectly upon waking. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I've had the. I think I've been given enough of a mysterious calling card. Okay, you do hear knocking at your door. Oh, Mars and Hugo, <clears throat> what would you like to do? Octavian. Yes. We need your help with something. Yes. How can I? How can I help? One of uh, fire means. Uh, Blackies. Em- employees. <laughs> I'll be nice about it. Employees uh, requests our assistance. 
they're trying to map something called the Oasis, which is like, I forget what it was described. It was like a, almost kind of like a sewer system. It's where all the water comes from. It's literally an oasis in the desert. And it's just so more okay. like a reservoir. Yeah, more like a reservoir. It's not like where they, it's not like where their ref, their garbage goes or anything like that, or their droppings, excrement, whatever. Well, I hope not. <sighs> That's that sounds fun. Anyways, we need you to convince the Yuan to let the map maker in so he can map it out. I can talk to them. Maybe you could disguise yourself as a what's his face, Scarlamane. Just really get them to do what you want. I'll figure it out. I'll put Gus Gus back in my head. You wake him from his slumber, and he's a little yeah. ir- he's a little irritated, but he climbs inside your skull. Just get in there, buddy. It's nice and you know. You hear him closer. grumbling about how comfortable the bed was. Well, I'm sorry. I'll get you some tiny pillows from in there. All right. um, I love this irritable Gus Gus. <laughs> irritable <laughs> Gus Gus. Now that he's got intelligence, he can appreciate yeah. the finer things. Yeah, just squeaking. Just mad squeaking. All right, you guys All get right. Thor hands as well? Yeah, we do. Okay, yeah. Thor hands, <laughs> you, you've been awake for a couple hours now. It's about, I would say, 10 in the morning. You've been enjoying the uh, <laughs> the room service that Octavian paid for you. Yes. Yeah, o- Octavian mark off a of gold. Okay. But you, Thorian, you did get some delicious breakfast. Sausage, egg, toast. You know, run of the mill. Nothing too fancy. All brought to you by a handsome bird man in a, in a Speedo. <laughs> you also. Delicious. <laughs> oh my god. So, where do we begin? I have to convince some Yuan T to let a man make maps. Child's play. All right, so you head back to the bar? Yes. Also, DM, I would like to make notes. Since I've leveled up, my passive insight is now 20. Okay. He's not... So I'm very good at telling when someone is lying to me. Okay. Or apparently when we're being followed, because we do yeah. relay to you that we are apparently being tailed. By who? Who's tailing us? Scarlamain, or whatever his name Fireman. is. Oh, Fireman. Fireman. He's tailing us. That's fine. I know he can't take his eyes off me. And I do, <laughs> and we do also let you know that the reason we need this map made is because uh, the guy who's making the map knows where Iron Solutions base is. Oh, okay. And he's... It's a deal. It's a transaction. We get him in it's there. It's a transaction. And Okay, all yeah. right, that's easy. That's easy. Ah, where's this little uh, map maker? We point over to the little cherry red cobalt. Yeah, he's oh just he's sitting there eating his breakfast. I walk over to him. Hello. He kind of looks up and goes, uh, do, "Do I know you?" I'm gonna put my. Uh, I'm gonna lean. I'm gonna like lean over, kind of like I'm still standing straight up, but my but I'm like. My body is now making a ninety degree angle at my head, at my like my oh pelvis, my with my elbows <laughs> on the table, like creating my head to be like. So you're the map maker. He goes ah, yes, and then you see Hugh I'm... on Mars, and he goes, "Oh, you you must be their other member." Yes, I'm gonna walk my fingers over to to the plate that he's um, uh, where he's eating, and be like, "So I was informed that you need to get into where the U on T are." He goes, yes, I need to map out the Oasis. Yes, what's your name? Pockets. Pockets? Yes, Pockets. What a lovely name. I'm Octavian. That's because of all the pockets. And he like opens his jacket up and you see just hundreds of pockets. My God. Just filled with papers (laughs) and maps. I'm going to (laughs) shout over to Mars. Tell the women I know where all the pockets went. (laughs) Mars is just like, what does that mean? It's, I'll tell you later. Um, all right, Pockets. You have my word. As a gentleman, I, Octavian Starfellow, will make sure that you get in there to make the greatest map of all time. He kind of smiles and says, that's all I want. Yes. All right. Finish your breakfast. I'm going to go talk to my compatriots. So, 
he's absolutely adorable. I'll do anything for him. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> uh. Uh, he finishes his breakfast quite quickly, leaving a couple sausages behind, but he hops down and walks over to you and says, well, I suppose I'll take you to the entrance and you can do the rest. All right. Perfect. Okay. So he leads you through the streets, down a set of stairs nestled in an alleyway, until he reaches a large stone door, and he just kind of says, well, they're on the other side, just just knock and do your magic. <clears throat> I'll knock on the door. It's a very thick door, and you hear a resounding <laughs> echo on the other side. Hello? After a few seconds, Hello? the door kind of like cracks open, and you see... Uh, a male head popped through with a little bit of uh, snake scales on either side of the cheek, and he kind of looks at him and he goes, what do you want? Hi, yes. I was informed that this is the oasis down here. He goes, it is. Yes, um, my friend here. I'll kind of like pull uh, pockets into, into view. My friend here is a map maker. He was wondering if he could get in there and make some maps. Take down some, you know, just document the place. He'll do nothing more. Right, Pat? Pockets, all you're doing is making maps. He goes, I guess, just maps. That's all I do. With my, tw with my 20 inside, is he lying? Uh, no, he's telling the truth. All right, yes, he's a very good map maker. <laughs> the, you see the auntie kind of sigh and says, we've talked to the map maker many times. <laughs> yes. No one is allowed into the oasis but Yanti. Oh, why is that? It is our sacred dominion. We Ugh. commune down here with Ionia. Mistress what of dreams. Hmm. He'll stay We're not out of your head. disturbing anything. Yes, he's just going to take some pictures. He won't say anything, right? Pockets just nods and says, yeah, I'm, I literally just want to make a map. We could just put a gag in his mouth just to make sure. <laughs> you see Pockets kind of go, I, I didn't agree to that. Well, it's called um, On the Fly. And you can keep an escort yes. with him. But yeah, if you can gag can... all of us for all we care, all we need is a yeah. map. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you must do it. I'm going to look directly at the, well, my mask. and look directly at the UNT. We're like, you can definitely gag all, all of us if you'd want. You see the UNT kind of about to say something before you hear a slight whisper from the other side. He turns his head, nods, and says, I will be right back. And he shuts the door. Okay. I'm going to give a thumbs up to the rest of the group. <laughs> After about... You guys just like, get, let's get this done. Come on. <laughs> After about ten minutes, the door opens fully, and you see about five Yunti, well-armed, kind of emerge, and a, a larger Yunti, not like, mm -hmm. not a pure blood, but oh. one, of, one of the more mutated ones. Oh, yeah. A, a monstrosity. A monstrosity, yes. yes. And he kind of... He, he comes out and he says, So you have interest in mapping the Oasis, Pockets. <gasps> and Pockets just nods. And he goes, And you four are interested in... Uh, we're just here to make sure that he's kept safe. And that he himself does not get into any trouble. He goes, Well... Yes, is that right, Pockets? You see him kind of scratch his chin with a snake-like hand. And he goes, oh we can allow him in to make a map. <laughs> if you facilitate a fair trade. Which is the fair trade? Our temple to Ionia was desiccated, desecrated a few well, weeks ago by a creature sent by who we can only assume is Dendar the Night Serpent. Ugh! God, I hate that guy. So... If you get rid of this beast and liberate our temple, Pockets can have free reign of the Oasis, along with you it's four. In there. It's in there. It's somewhere in here, yes. All right, fine, we'll do it. I'm, I'll walk up to the to the monstrosity, and I'll be like, a big, strong boy like you wasn't able to take care of it yourself. Oh, my God. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Twenty-eight. <laughs> why, are you, why are you seducing the snake monster? You see him kind of like get taken aback, and he says, "Oh, 
We are not warriors. We are simple um, travelers who found this oasis, and the the people of the city gave it to us as a as a good as what's the word I'm looking show for? Show of faith. Show of good faith. Yes, show of good faith. Well, we question. If we keep the warrior. water. No, I'm not a warrior. I'm an I'm an engineer. We keep the water then, running. Oh. So these big muscles are for lifting big, heavy things and building big, heavy things. You see him kind of get a little flustered, and he's like, oh, just, do you, are you going to kill the creature or not? Oh, we'll definitely kill the creature, honey. All right. He goes, then Then you are able to enter, but do not stray. Oh. If any of you are caught away from your escorts, you will be thrown out, and the deal will be off. Can I make one addendum to the deal? What would that be? Can pockets come in with us? Start making maps, and I ha you have my word. If we die in the process, you can kill him. <laughs> you see, pockets. Kinda pockets like, oh. is just kind of like what? He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! I I didn't agree to that. Pockets, you'll be able to get in earlier and start making the map on time. Trust me. They whatever this creature is. Probably That's won't not be necessary. To... We'll just kill the creature. Pockets, just hang back. goes i will wait here and he goes i have some notes to take and he kind of sits down and begins writing and he goes but the the leader kind of goes follow me all right so um i'll walk next to the really big monstrosity so what do um you said you worship a goddess of dreams what do big buff snake men dream about you hear some snickering coming from the other guards and he goes i None of us dream since this creature took over our temple. Oh, nightless sleeps of, and nights of sleepless dreams. <laughs> Let me just say, I know exactly how you feel. It's agony. Mars just like walks up behind Octavian, baps him on the back of the head, and goes, <laughs> "Stop flirt! Stop flirting with a nice man." I'm gonna t I'm gonna telepathically scream in Mars's head. Mars, remember <laughs> precious cargo. <laughs> As you do I hit him on the back. I didn't hard enough. To, I didn't hit him hard enough to like rattle anything. Just to like tap him on the back of the head. Octavian, you hear slight cursing coming from the inside of your skull. Sorry, just you know, inner thoughts and all. <laughs> he goes, listen. The creature yes. has killed at least ten of my people. And as you Aww. begin walking, you see that the, the stone hallway gives way to this large, open stone dome with pipes running here and there, straight up, curving left and right. And you see, tending to the pipes, Yon T, all dressed in commoner's garb, but with belts of tools on. Hello, everyone. We're here to take care of your um, creature problem creature feature the creature feature yes all right they all kind of like look at they kind of like glance at you but go back to their work what a tough crowd hmm. i have a question yes does the creature devour your people entirely or does that just kill them is it, is it like killing for the sake of killing or is it like feasting on them do you get what i mean he goes, we're not entirely sure. Hmm. How smart is the creature? Would you say it has an bout of intelligence, or is it like a beast? It's... I'm not sure. The only ones who've hmm. gone in and see it have not come back. Ah, oh, damn it. Well, if this point is in the direction, we'll most definitely take care of that problem for you. He goes, well, I'm taking you there. And he continues walking. And after about five minutes, you exit the large dome with all the pipes. And you enter a small little town built of shacks and ramshackle buildings. And after walking through this and getting strained looks once again, you eventually reach another set of large stone doors. And he goes, it's on the other side of here. Okay. You've got it locked in this room. No one goes in. The creature has not tried to leave. All right. I'll turn to the party. All right, we're just going to, pardon the um, pun, slip in, and then uh, fuck, this, fuck this thing shit up, right? Yes. It'll be easy. We've done harder things. Hopefully. Especially yes. now that Hugo's got a gun. <laughs> 
You just got a big ass gun. Should be fine. Be you have brave. my sword and, and, and my, my shield gun. and my gun and my and Glock. My Okay. <laughs> so he nods, and you see the two of the guards stick a key and unlock the door and swing it open. And immediately you're met with this horrible stench that just wafts out of the room. Oh, oh I can't smell anything, so... <laughs> yeah, it, it does not affect you. But the rest yeah. of you, it smells like death. This is disgusting. Hmm. Yes, what a horrible smell, I say. Ha, uh, I can smell very much well. Yes, mm-hmm. Disgusting, your skull is just gagging. A <laughs> 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 little, little my, mice vomit in there. <laughs> Gus, Gus, just I'll get Ew. some incense later. We'll burn it inside my skull. All right, he kind of gestures and says, do your thing. Yes, we will. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. I'm just imagine we go back to the hotel and <laughs> Mars walks in to ask Octavian a question and he just sees smoke coming out of your eyes. <laughs> and then he just leaves. The smell of sage. <laughs> um, I'm going to say to the UNT, I'll say goodbye to the Lou, and then I'll say to the big UNT, bye. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he looks confused gestures and they shut the doors behind you all right you are all now in pitch black darkness i have dark vision so i'm good i, I think see... i got a spell for that i can't see anything but i'll cast my... light on I'll my put rifle my... i'll put i'll put my hands on mars and be like i think i found the creature it's oh it's disgusting it feels horrid and monstrous Mars flicks you in the forehead. Oh, oh, it's attacking me. As you're saying this, the light spell triggers, and you see, you all see how how big of a radius is the light spell? It's, it's twenty foot. feet or twenty foot. Twenty foot. Twenty foot. Well, no wonder everybody fucking dies after they come in here. It's dark as hell. Yeah, they probably trip and break their neck. All right, so. Within the 20 feet, you see you are you see the ceiling stretch off into darkness before you and darkness on either side of you. The room is much larger than 20 feet. Oh, and I've got a torch. I can light that, too. Okay. There we go. We have so much light. Oh, hold on. Let me see if Gus Gus has them. Uh, yeah, Gus Gus. I'm going to clap my hands as Gus Gus is going to cast the light cantrip inside my head. Okay, so your, head, your skull just lights up. Two like two headlights staring yeah. straight ahead. <laughs> oh my god! And I'm just like, wow. In all honesty, every day you find new ways to be completely horrifying. Yay! All right. And at this point, Mars doesn't know you can fly yet. Yeah, no one knows I can fly yet. <laughs> All right, so you the darkness stretches before you. You don't hear anything. You don't see anything in the distance. All right. Going to, to I'm going to... Um, Hello? I'll use... Um, do I see any dead things? Make a perception check. All right. 23. 23? Within the 20 mm -hmm. feet, you do not see any bodies or corpses. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Do, do, do. I guess I'll look. What is that sound? I hear like a beeping sound. It sounds... I hear it on my end, too. It's, yeah, uh... what is that? It's coming... It, it was says it was coming from Dave. It said Dave is uh... typing, and it was like... Oh, yeah. Weird. Apparently everything's gone quiet for Dave. It's weird. We can still hear Dave's, like, typing. Hmm. That's weird. I'll look up. Do I see anything, like, stuck to the ceiling? Like a perception check. Or, no, with your... What was your well, previous reception? If Dave can't hear us, shouldn't we slow down just for a yeah, second? Yeah, yeah, we, we'll take a break. 
as I figure out That's weird. Oh my god. Nope, he disconnected. He's probably gonna reconnect. Uh, hello? Okay, there we go. I don't there we go. <laughs> so yeah, we just got to the cave. Did you hear about uh, Octavian's new headlights? Yes, I heard the headlights. <laughs> I'll look up. Do I see anything on the And that's when, it, that's, that's when it cut off, is that part. Oh. So with a, what was your perception check again? 23. 23. With the 23, you don't see anything around you. But as you look up, you do see two glowing red eyes staring directly at you. Oh, uh, there oh. it is. He's right there. Ooh. I'll say to him, hi. Can I take a shot? <laughs> yeah, take a shot. I would also like to throw a spell at it. All right, both of you make attack rolls. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cast Sacred Flame at him. Okay. He's got to do a dex save. Dex save. What do I have to beat? A 15. All right, with a 16. Ah, right. uh, goddamn. Um, One sec. Does it, Let me see if he takes half damage or not. No. Sacred Flame just misses if he dodges. Okay. So you lash do I out. Get a, do Sorry. we get a better look at him with yeah, the so I fire? To, I was about to say. Uh, as you lash out with your attack, you see it scream towards the ceiling and it illuminates above. And you see the two red eyes as it gets closer and closer. The two red eyes are this large snake-like shadow that's just stuck to the ceiling. And as your spell impacts, it goes right through it to the other side. Damn. And you, go, you want to do attack? Yeah, I'm going to attack. I'm going to pump a branding smite into my gun. Okay. Does a 21 hit? 21 does hit. And you take out your new gun and you fire it at the, the shadowy snake creature. It impacts with this rapturous explosion. And you do 11 damage? If I do 11 plus 10. No, 11. 11 plus 11, so, so 22. 22 damage total. So you watch as the snake, the shadowy snake creature evaporates from the oh, impact. What? And you we all... Did it! You, <laughs> you hear from around you this loud, <laughs> deep laughing. <laughs> Guys, the voices! They're out here now. They're in surround sound. And you hear, um... You hear the voice. Oh, not many people have uh, destroyed my shadow like that. We're not many people. We're at least four people. All right. Oh, fuck. I clicked on something. So, uh, Hugo. Yeah. I need you to give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Guys, I'm not good at wisdom. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not okay. What if he, like, takes me over? <laughs> what if he takes me? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I rolled a 19. 19. So, you all watch as this strange crown of thorns appears on Hugo's head. Oh. Oh, is it a charm spell? <laughs> yes. And for a brief moment, you watch as his eyes flicker before the thorns dissipate. And you hear the, you hear the laughter again. And you hear, this will be interesting. And I need everybody to roll initiative. Did I fail? Did I not? No, you succeed? succeeded. You succeeded. Okay. I was, I was just, just like shit. I was just trying to take over spell. my mind. <laughs> Seven. Seven for uh, a <laughs> I get advantage. Let's see. So that's a s no. Hey, it, it auto put it in. Wait, it cocked? Oh no, it didn't cock. It it looks cocked. But it, uh, 12 is my highest initiative. Okay. Yeah, it put in 12 and then put in a 9. It automatically did it for some reason. Oh. Oh. I got a 15. I got a natural 1. So a total of 1? A total of 2, but... Okay. We're all gonna live! 
This can't <laughs> possibly go wrong. Well, I mean, ultimately, it's probably better if your group's healer is going is. last. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's true. It's I'm also true. a seven, which I'm like the... Yeah, so... All right. Like, in the long run, it probably is going to be a better if I'm going last out of all of us. Okay, so... You all hear the laughter once again, and all of a sudden this little purple orb comes flying out of the darkness and impacts the center of your group. I need everybody oh. to give me a wisdom save. A wisdom oh. save? Oh <laughs> my god. Oh, I got something. Oh, I, got a, I, got I got really a high wisdom. <laughs> no. 22. 22? Okay, you're good. 16. You're good. 11 for uh, me. I'm guessing Thor's Okay, you are affected. Oh no. I got a two. A two. So Hugo and Thornhenge. Let me read the spell. Condition. Okay. Unconscious. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But uh, you guys, for a brief moment, you feel woozy and the room begins to spin rapidly. Uh, you are both now considered confused. Are they charmed? Confused. Not charmed, just confused. Oh. Well, Hugo is so, also charmed, so. Well, well no, he wasn't. No, I'm not charmed. I'm not charmed. I'm just confused. So, I what was that, that last one? At the beginning of your turns, I roll a d10 and it decides what your action is. Oh, oh we're, we, we're shit. we have the confusion spell on us. Yeah. Okay. But that is. To... Yeah, that is the end of the creature's turn. <sighs> Hugo, roll yep. a d10 for me. <laughs> Great. I okay. can't possibly blow up in our faces. <laughs> I'm just going to shoot everyone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like that scene from Alien. Yeah. I rolled a six. A six. All right. For this, you, you do not take an action or move this turn. Oh, Jesus. But it's the end of the spell. It's the end of your turn. So go ahead and give me another wisdom saving throw. Okay. I rolled a 15. All right. You just succeed. Oh. So you are, you are no longer confused. Just standing there like, oh. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's the end of your turn, though. Thornhand, you're up, so roll me a d10. Oh, my turn? Yes. All righty. Six. Six. You do not take any movement or actions this turn. Uh, what's going on? Where am I? <laughs> Pretty much. But it is the end of your turn, so go ahead and give me another wisdom saving throw. A wisdom saving throw. Uh, 18. All right, you are no longer confused. Ah, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. But that's the end of your turn. Octavian, you're up. All right. Oh, I didn't roll for Gus Gus. Oh, yeah, roll for Gus Gus. Gus Gus. Gus Gus. Ba -da 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 -da. Gus Gus got a two. Okay, so he goes at this. <laughs> Mars, what is your dexterity? Um, Like just the base stat? Yeah, it, this way we can determine if you or Gus Gus goes first. Uh, 12. And what is Gus Gus's? 12. 12. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Rollies. Rollies, yeah. Yeah, rollies. So, what is that? You just roll a d20, d20, whoever has the highest number goes first. Unless you'd like to Gus default. Gus Gus got to a 4. You can also just default, and you can. I got choose. a seventeen. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to go first. Gus Gus. Yeah. You go first, Octavian. You're up, though. All right, I'm going to grab onto Mars's hands. Okay. I'm going to be like Mars. Do you trust me? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> as I start to, as we both start <laughs> levitating and flying into the air, as if we're being pulled <laughs> up via, uh, like stage wires for like a play. Isn't Mars afraid of heights? <laughs> As I yeah. cast fly on both of us. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, ah. <laughs> At first Mars, this you is begin to <laughs> At first Mars, you just begin to float straight up, higher and higher. <laughs> you just start singing that Ariana Grande song. Yeah. <laughs> I immediately start to panic as my feet yeah. leave the ground. It's, Mars, it's like that scene just... from Willy Wonka. Yeah, it's like Peter Pan. <laughs> Didn't they almost die in that? <laughs> they did! They did. <laughs> as I rocket up into the sky. It's like, happy thoughts, Mars! Happy thoughts! 
<laughs> there are very few happy thoughts in this situation. And then for my bonus action, uh, I don't know where the, I can't see the creature. Wait, no, I still have the, the high beams. <laughs> the high beams. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and give me a perception check. Yes. The high beams. Isn't your... 21. 21. You see into the darkness with your your high beams. And you see off on maybe 30 or 40 feet away from you. No, 30 feet. Mm -hmm. You see this large snake-like creature with these wings and only two little arms on either side of it. <laughs> with piercing red eyes just staring directly at you. Oh, I see him, guys. He's... Ugh. Oh, God. Oh, what the fuck is that thing? Is that the end of your turn, though? Yeah, that's the end of my turn. Mars, you're up. <laughs> Mars, blindly panicking, just, like, <laughs> looks at where Octavian is looking. You, you, After Octavian points it out to you, you do see the creature. It's... What's its size? It's large. It's quite large. Since I am, like, a religious person, can I roll to see if I recognize it? Make a religion check. God, it's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sixteen. Sixteen. You've studied demons and creatures before. This is a snake overlord. Oh. Mm. Mm. Do I have any insight about what I need to be worried about? Uh, it is a fiend. It is quite large. It is a magic caster of sorts, but it can deal damage with claws. Okay. What did you say it was called? Snake Overlord. It's homebrew, so you won't find it in the... No, I'm not like looking it up. I'm just going to relay that to everybody. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And just be like, guys, that's a, that's a snake overlord. The rest All of right. you, you can make religion checks to see if you've heard of it. Sure. And I'll I just, like... Uh, you just religion. gotta be most... Be careful uh, for its ooh, magic God. attacks. 19. Uh, how, how, yeah, 19. Um, you would know that it is a servant of Dendar the Night Serpent. Dendar the Night Serpent. <laughs> I've never heard of that. I don't know what that god is or fiend is just imagine a big snake that is also the nighttime sky oh i rolled the natural 20 and i get a plus sport of religion <laughs> so 24 <laughs> you would know yeah. that i don't know how i would know this i lived in a city all my life you you're you're a bookworm you've studied you know that you it just is found, found a religious book <laughs> that a customer dropped yeah it is it is dangerous. It can it can fight quite well. But you also know that it also has the ability to create a shadow of itself that can draw attention away from it. Which is probably what you destroyed in the beginning. Ah. And it's a decoy. Be, care, be careful for its magic. But Mars, it's Mars calls magic. out. You still have your action. Yep. I'm gonna just point my point my um my mace at it and fire off a guiding bolt from the head of it all right is that an attack roll yep make your attack roll i got a 16 that just hits okay now we all know that we've got to make or beat a 16 <laughs> for our attacks mhm mm yes okay damage 22 Damn. Ooh. That's good damage. That's well, I cast it at the fifth. I decided to cast this one at fifth level. So oh, you lash Damn. out with divine energy as it screams across the darkness, slamming into the creature's side and leaving this glowing orb of white light on it. That's the end of your turn? Or you have movement. Yep. You have movement in any direction since you're flying. <laughs> yeah. Mars doesn't go too high up, but he like... Are there any, like, pillars around? No, it is a large dome-like structure. <laughs> well, fuck, he's just kind of, like, floating there then. He doesn't really <laughs> know what to do, kind of paralyzed by fear, because he was dragged up quite a bit by Octavian. Yes. Okay. That's the end of your turn? Yep. All right. 
Hugo and Thornhage. He's just, he's oh, no, just like Gus Gus. Oh, Gus Gus. That's right. Gus Gus goes. Yes. Yeah. I don't. In Mars's head, he's just try. He's just like muttering to himself. You're just in a pool of water. You're just in a pool of water. You're just in a pool of water. <laughs> Gus Gus is going to. Uh, Gus Gus is going to cast at fifth level. Hold monster. Oh. 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 Let me look something up real quick. <laughs> sure. Is it a monster? We just don't. Mm-hmm. Know. Yes. You oh, choose a creature. You can see. You can choose a creature within range. Of 90 feet. <clears throat> okay, it'll work. Must make a wisdom saving throw or become paralyzed for the duration, which is one minute. The spell has no effect on undead. And at, at the end of each of its turns, the target must make a wisdom saving throw and a success. The spell ends. That's a natural 20 plus 2, so 22. Damn it, Gus Gus! Good I'm effort, though. I'm trying my Good best, effort. sir. That's the end of his turn? Or would he like yeah. to move outside of your skull? No, he's going to stay inside my head. Okay. <laughs> Hugo and this Thornhenge. This is the first time I'm using my magic, yeah. sir. Hold on, let me read this. Please, give me a turn. <laughs> Alright, you guys watch as you're ready your weapons. You watch as the creature kind of, its eyes flash, and suddenly the ground around you shifts. Oh, and as gosh. you look down, you ground see... Ground around who? <laughs> <laughs> The ground around Thornhenge and Hugo shifts, and you both look down and you see thousands, not thousands, hundreds of snakes slithering across, and they begin to climb up at you. I need both of you to make a constitution saving throw. Constitution? No, no, not yet, not yet. Only at the start of your turn. Start of my turn. Yes. Okay. But you all watch as the creature slithers back into the darkness. Oh. But it's still glowing. Yeah. Yeah, because see you. Nice try, fucker. That's yeah, why I cast guy. That's why I cast guiding fault on you. All right, but that's the end of its turn. Hugo, give me a Constitution saving throw. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, get a plus six to my con. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. So you take half damage. You take oh a, God! You take a total of how big it is. Okay. That's some long processing there on that end. What? What's my damage? You take. Let me open my calculator because I'm not good at math. Oh God! It's not a lot. It's oh. just I have to ca- I have to divide it in half. Oh okay. uh, yeah yeah yeah. You take seventeen points of slashing and necrotic or slashing and psychic damage. So seventeen total. Okay. So thirty four okay. would have been the actual damage. Yes, thirty four. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ooh. That's not a lot. Right, you little motherfucker. But I'm it is your turn, Hugo. Shoot this. <laughs> you just hear Hugo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loading the gun. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what did you say? Oh. He says he's gonna kill that little motherfucker. (laughs) I was just reading Um, the effects of the Gios spell to see if I could cast that on this thing. And I could if I felt like it. So good. 17 (laughs) plus 5, does that hit? That'll hit. Excellent. And I'm also, so I have Branding Smite pumped into this already. Oh, and you get advantage on your attack. Yeah, you get advantage because it is. Oh, shit. Let's see if I get a crit. Yeah, if you get a crit. Fuck it, shit up! Uh, no, I didn't. Alright, but you still hit. Uh, so I'm gonna pump a branding smite, and I'm gonna pump, uh... You wanna get pumped? Yeah, pretty much. Let's get pumped! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to pump... A arcane jolt, which delivers an additional two d six of force damage. All right. So let's do the branding smite damage first. I'll roll that first because I don't know how to roll everything together. So ten radiant plus. Six rifle plus. I'll just roll the D six. Ooh. Ooh. 
what, what did I say? 10 plus 6 plus 11 is what? 27? 27. 27 damage. All right, so you take your rifle, you aim at the glowing spot, and you fire. You see the creature trying to dodge out of the way, but it slams into its scaly hide as it lets out this pained grunt. The the glowing orb disappears, however, but you hit it for quite a lot of damage. But you yeah. do have movement if you'd like to get out of the snake radius. Yeah, I'd like to get out of the snake radius. The oh, snadius. Yeah, the snadius. It's a 20-foot radius, so easily enough you can get out of it. Excellent. Oh, but I have like to make a concentration check. Takes out of a chip bag. Sorry. Oh, yeah, because I did damage to you. I'm assuming that is a concentration yep, roll. It fails, so you watch as the snakes oh. vanish. Oh, I don't even need to move. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the end of your turn? Yep. Thornhand, you're up. All right, do I make a constitution saving throw? Nope, the snakes have dissipated. So you're hey. good. Hey! All right, do I see the snake overlord then? Make a perception check. You're welcome. Check. Oh, God. <clears throat> Alright, does it cost me an action, or can I just... No, it's, it's just, it's it's a free action. Okay, got it. Oh, come on! Twelve? Twelve. You peer into the darkness, and you see movement, but it's just so, it's so dark. You can still, well, if I don't know if you have any range. It's, from where it last was, it's quite a distance from you. Uh, hang on. Do I have dark? Hang on. I think I, hang on. It's dark in the room, right? Yeah, it's very dark. It's pitch black. Other hang than on. the light sources your companions are generating. Wait, wait. Hey, I have dark vision that can see in dim light within 120 feet. All right, then you can see him. He is on the other side of the room, lashed onto the wall, just staring at you. Yep. Uh, can I reach him with my um, 40 feet of walking speed? He is about 100 feet away. Shit. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I will... You would be able to reach him. He's about 30 feet away. I'm, I was oh. reading his range, not his actual distance. Okay, cool. I go into melee range with him and attack him with my great axe. All right, he is up high, so you would have to fly. But you have a forty, yep. you have a forty feet flying, so you're good. Yeah, so I would fly up. Yeah, I would move up and fly up to get in melee range with him. Easily enough. And... Go ahead and make your attack roll. Cool. Yeah. <gasps> Ooh, that's a twenty-five. That'll hit. All right. Big damage. Big damage. <laughs> 11 points of flashing damage. All right. So you fly up and just cut into him. He lets out this pained scream as he thrashes around, scales glittering and falling to the ground. That's the end of your turn. Oh, hang on a second. It's a... On a frenzy. Uh, oh, no. But... Um, and I have a bonus action still, so I would like to rage. All right, you rage. Yes. That way I can attack it in a frenzy uh, next turn. All right. To rage. Octavian, you're up. All right. So can I position myself so I'm at least 30 feet away from everyone? Yes. All right. As I'm floating in the air, I'm going to pull out my... Um, I remember what instrument I have on me. Um, the lyre? Yeah. My lyre, yes. Pull out my little tiny hand harp and just be like, ring, ring. Okay. Yeah, and I will use my action to cast Counter Charm. Ah, okay. So as an action, I can prove performance. During that time, you and any friendly creature within 30 feet of me gain advantage on all saving throws against being either frightened or charmed. So they have advantage? They have advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed. Oh, shit. That's awesome. Yeah. And I'm just going to be like, snakes, 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 snakes. I'm sick of these motherfucking, yeah. motherfucking snakes. Oh, my motherfucking, motherfucking so hard. All right. <laughs> That's the end of your turn. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to start like making just the most ungodly. Uh, whenever the creature tries to talk, I'm just going to say what it's saying, but like, well, just like strumming your yeah, yeah, hilarious. All right, Mars, you're up. All right, 
the... Huh? Can, can I... Do I know where it is now since, um... You can see Thornhenge. Thornhenge. Yeah, you can see Thornhenge locked in battle with it. Okay, then. I'm gonna... Hmm. Dang, my spell list has gotten very long. Yep. Uh, level 10. That'll do it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And my campaign, I got a dwarf that multi-class as a sorcerer and a warlock. So, he has... It's like the a, best combo. It is. A, he has a shit ton of spells. And, the, uh, yeah, sorcerer is something I gotta still study in to see how that shit works. Alright, then. I'm gonna cast Bane at it. Alright. Right. What's the saving throw? Uh, 15 charm. So, wisdom? Or charisma? No, it's charm. Charisma. Yeah, okay. I see CHA and my brain goes, oh, JRPG stats. What's the total charm. 15. He fails, even with advantage. Oh, damn. Oh, he has advantage on charm? Or he has charisma? A, against spells and other magical effects. Oh, wow. But he failed. 13 and a 14. All right, then. That just means that the next time he does an attack or a saving throw, he has to roll a d4 and subtract that from whatever he rolls. Okay, good to know. Is that the end of your turn? Yeah. Uh, yes, I don't... One second. Let me just... It's been a while, so I'm just going to double check my... If I got any bonus actions... Uh, uh, uh. Nope, there's nothing I can do. All right. Gus, Gus, you're up. You ever seen Temple of the Crystal Skull? Uh, no. Oh, the Indiana Jones movie. Oh, yes, I have. I thought you were referring you to know. Jones. You know when her eyes catch fire? <laughs> I see what you're going with. Yeah. Um, um, can I? Can Gus Gus see the creature? Yeah, Thornhenge is in combat, so you can see it. Uh, so, I am going to uh, <laughs> cast... Uh, Gus Gus is going to cast Flame Sphere. Okay. So, uh, uh, um, Octavian is going to start writhing in pain, like clutching his eyes as like fire starts to pour out of his eye sockets as a giant, like tear shaped flaming ball is going to shoot out of his head, out of his, one of his eye sockets and then crash down onto the creature. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh my Flame god. Sphere. All right, so what's the saving throw? Hold on one moment. Do you have Flame Sphere up? Uh, I will open it. Because I, I don't have, like, actual list of the spell. It just tells me that he can cast it. Oh, yeah, I know. I understand that. Where's spells? Yeah. Where are spells? spells it would be on our evocation correct uh yes let's see flame sphere it's loading or not not fall me yours oh. may have laser eyes but mine breathes fire <laughs> flame sphere here it is second level spell 60 feet that's the one it's a deck save. He's got to beat a 16 deck save. I do not have Flame Sphere for some reason. Is it? What book hmm. is it from? I'm literally on. Flaming Sphere. Flaming Sphere. Flaming Sphere. That might not be Flame it. Sphere. Yeah. No, it's. Oh, yeah. I don't that... have it. Hmm. What? That's weird. That's like basic. That's yeah, basic. Yeah, I have all the books too, so I don't. I type in Sphere, sphere. and it gives me all these Sphere spells, but it does not give me. 
It should be at the very top, Flaming Sphere, second level spell. Yeah, it only gives me Udalux Resilient Sphere, Resilient Sphere, Storm Sphere, Vitrolox Sphere, Freezing Sphere, and Udalux Freezing Sphere. Does oh, not... weird. That's weird. Just oh, wait, it's not Evocation. I'm sorry. Uh, it's not Evocation. It's, um... It's Conjuration. It's Conjuration. That's what it is. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. I, was, I was getting like, I have all the books, how dare you? <laughs> there we go, Flaming Sphere. Dex save. Okay, rolling a dex save. But he take he minuses a four from that, a d four, right? Um, no. Why yes. would he minus a d four? Because of bane. Bane. Oh yes, I guess so. so. Oh, he rolled a natural twenty, so a total of uh -huh. twenty four minus one from the d four, so twenty three. <laughs> Yikes! All right. Um. Even also, he has advantage, used... but it's a natural no. twenty, so he can't go any higher. Yeah. But so he's going to take 2d6 fire damage or half as much on a success. Okay, However, sure. the sphere stays there. Yeah, I know. So it was 2d6. He's going to take... Uh, so it's a 7, so that's rounded down. It's 3. 3. All right, so you cast it, and you see him, the sphere, he just... Pulls himself out of the way, just between him and th just between the sphere and Thornhand. He snakes his way through, literally. We can see him now. Yeah, you can see him much clearer now. It illuminates yeah. a very large area. But that's the end of Gus Gus's turn. Yes. All right. Let's see. So, how does charm counter charm work? Do they have advantage. Uh, yeah, they have advantage on. Being charmed or frightened. Okay, let me read the spell real quick. It's not a it's not a spell. It's an effect. It's an effect. No, I'm reading my spell. I mean. Oh, okay. Let me just open the full thing up. It's a feature of being a bard. Ah. <laughs> all right so he's gonna cast suggestion on all of you or no is it just one person oh. it does where's where's how many people suggestions uh targets multiple people depending on what level you're casting it at he only has it at doesn't say just says once a day so suggestion is a second level spell. Second level, yeah. I which guess... means it can only target one person. Okay, yeah, it's only one person. So Thornhand, you're right on top of him. Give me a wisdom saving throw with advantage because you are counter you are counter charmed. Counter charmed. Uh I suggest you die. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> 17 is the highest I got. Yeah, you're good. So he casts it and he looks at you and he says, run. And for a brief moment, you feel the panic well up inside you and you think, I need to get away. But then that rage kicks in and you shake it off and you just stare him down. And for a brief moment, you see fear in his eyes. I don't need to run. I need yeah. to kill. Yeah. <laughs> Thorhan's like, right. wait. All All right. Right. Listen uh... to snakes. That's the end of his turn, though. He is going to take some movement to try and get away from the Flaming Sphere, giving you an attack of opportunity. Hell yeah. Oh, I have an attack of opportunity? Yes. Alrighty. I will... Hang on. Let me see if I have anything specific. And, um... Nope, nothing specific. I'll make a reaction attack, so... Oh, right. uh, 18 to hit. That'll hit. Alright, damage! Uh, six. All Points right. of slashing damage. So you slash into him and you see this black ichor-like blood spread out and impact your legs as he just kind of writhes in pain from the sphere. But he does snake away from the sphere and you about... 60 feet away. Mm. But Ooh, he's th got some movement on him. That's the end of his turn. Hugo, you're up. I'm going to take a shot. Okay, take a shot. Oh, 
Oh my god. Well, I'm so well. Uh, 18 plus 5. That'll hit. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. So, with the Branding Smite and uh, the Arcane Jolt. All right. So, let's see. That's 8 plus... Where's my hand? Mm. Is it like a Smith & Wesson, like... A revolver that you have? It's a rifle. Oh, it's a, it's rifle. a rifle. Okay. Yeah. So also, it's if it's the automatic rifle, after 30 shots, you have to reload. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. So that's total 18 plus two more D6. So a total of 26 damage. Nice. All right, he's not looking too good. Ooh, as you you fire another shot that screams through the air, and as he you watch as he's snaking away from the fire, the flaming sphere, it impacts him on the side, and he jostles for a moment before regaining his composure and continue to fly away. You have movement if you'd like, but that's the end of your turn. I think you can get away from me. I think so. Um, I'm just gonna stay where I am. All right, Thornhand, you're up. Uh, uh, he's 60 feet away from me, right? He has moved 60 feet away. I will use my movement to move the full 40 feet towards him. All right. And I will do intimidating presence to see if I can give him disadvantage. <laughs> Rawr. <laughs> yep. A little fluffed up oh, feathers is a yeah. big, big improvement. Like, you should run from me. Uh, so he has to make a DC wisdom saving throw of 12. Owls eat snakes. Owls bitch. Eat. A total of eight. So he is considered feared. <laughs> As he should be. So he, so if he's a fear, he can no longer move towards you. And he has disadvantage on attacks against you, correct? As long as I'm in sight, I think. Yes. All right. Good to know. That the end of your turn? Yep. Octavian. Uh, oh, no. That's a. Uh, is Intimidate Presence an action? Oh, no, it is an action. It's like, yeah, that's my turn. Okay. Octavian, you're up. I'll. Uh, kind of begin doing, like, arm movements as I'm going to, like, spin around and then strike a pose looking at the, the creature. <laughs> and I'm going to say, How do you do I? See, you've met my faithful <laughs> handyman. They're just a little brought down because when we knocked, we weren't expecting a snaky man. Don't get strung out by the way I look. Don't judge a book by its cover. I'm not much of a man by the light of day, but by night I'm one hell of a lover. I'm just a squeak skeleton. Did you just say squeet? Yes. <laughs> Mars just says that in character. Yeah. As I'm continuing to do counter charm. Okay. Oh my god. That is very distracting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, yeah, it was counter charm. So it takes an action. All right. Mars. I don't think I have any bones. Do I have any bonus actions? Hold on. Check, check check trades, actions, bonus actions. Uh, Squeak. I'll, I'll give a bardic inspiration to... Uh, I'm going to give finger guns to Thorhinge. Just like... Uh, <laughs> bardic inspiration. Cool. So bardic yeah. inspiration. Uh, so uh, on your next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can add a d10. Hey. Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, your... However... This can be added after seeing the roll, but before knowing the outcome. All right, cool. Just a squeak. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's Mars, awesome. you're up. Oh, my God. <laughs> after seeing Octavian's display. <laughs> yeah. yeah, how distracted are you, Mars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, not enough. I was only distracted momentarily by Octavian making up words. Yes. <laughs> so, it's your turn. Oh, no, that's a touch spell. I don't want to get too close to this thing. Uh, 
I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of spells that aren't uh make the enemy do a save throw spells. Hmm. I guess I'm casting another sa guiding bolt. All right. Make an attack roll. 13. I know that misses. That misses unfortunately. God damn. Well, guess I'm boned. All right. So you fire it out, and he sees it coming this time and, like, arches his snake-like body in his way so the uh, the guiding bolt just flies past him. That's the end of your turn, though? Yep. Gus, Gus, you're up. Uh, he's going to stick his little hand out of my eye socket, kind of, like, move it around and then, like, make, like, that kind of, like, clenched, open hand gesture and he's going to make the so he's going to use his bonus action to make this flaming sphere roll towards the creature all right uh, it can move yeah he can move it up to 30 feet does that get near the creature he moved 60 feet away so no ah uh, okay uh yeah so it's going to move 30 feet up to the thing um all right and then so that's his bonus action he's going to use his um going to use <laughs> he's going to use uh is is uh Thorhinge on him? No, Thorhinge twenty feet away. Twenty feet away, yeah. Okay. Uh he's going to he's going to uh <laughs> because you know he takes after his father. Gus Gus is going to make the uh flaming sphere jump up into the air. Um, okay. And he's going to turn Flaming Spear into Fireball. Okay. So I need as it's going to rocket towards the creature. Deck save. Uh, I believe. So. Yeah. So Fireball is a deck save. <clears throat> needs to beat a sixteen. He rolled a natural nineteen plus. No, don't go away. A twenty-three total. Jesus. Plus four. No, well, he's four. still going to take half damage on a half success. Damage. All right. So it's 8d6. Gus, he will Gus. actually... Sorry, no, not 8d6. He's casting it at 5th level, his second 5th level spell. Um, did he cast... Yeah, because he tried casting Hold Monster and it failed, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's his second... He's gonna. He has no more 5th levels. But every spell slot, fourth level or higher, so it's going to be 10d6. Okay. 10d6 and, hold on, um, because it's an empowered spell, whenever the spellcaster casts a spell of the school by ex expanding as a spell, which it is within his school, it's evocation, um... The spellcaster can add its spellcasting ability modifier to the spell's damage roll. Um, so the spellcasting modifier is plus eight. Okay. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, so that's 25 and half. So what's half of 25? Let me bust up my calculator. My calculator. Yeah. Half of 25? Yeah. That's about probably, tw I think, 12. Rounding 12. down, right? Yeah, 12 12. Plus... it'd be 12.5, so 12. So 12 plus 8 is... 20. 20. So he's going to play... Yeah, he's going to take 20 fire damage as the Flaming Sphere rolls, pops into the air, and then arcs like a missile, and then detonates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so you see him kind of like weighing the situation as the glow and the fireball gets closer and closer until he sees it at the last second. He pulls himself away from the explosion, but it singes his wings, and he, you see him kind of like half... One of his wings is really hurt, and he's just like half flying down the middle of the air. Octavian is singing Rocky Horror Picture Show, and <laughs> Gus Gus has like Hellfire playing in the background. Okay, <laughs> that's the end of Life. your turn. Uh, yep, that's his turn. It is now the creature's turn. Let's see if he gets back his ability. He does. <laughs> okay. So Gus Gus himself is the one singing Hellfire. Yeah. Oh, where did, uh, where did you learn Logan, that song? Yes. 
I forgot to tell you, every time I hit him with branding smite, he always is be going to be glowing like a five foot radius. <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> always. But uh, <laughs> he gets his ability back. So Octavian and Mars, you, yes. you watch as this gray sphere encompasses you. And all of a sudden, snakes just begin filling the sphere surrounding you. In the air? In the air. Ah, <laughs> uh, sphere oh, of snakes. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it is a 20 foot sphere <laughs> snakes little, snakes! little snake like snakes with little wings just flying around biting at you oh, my sex snakes! there's a snake and the, there's just like one t teeny tiny snake inside your skull to frighten gus gus yeah he's like fighting it <laughs> that's the end of its turn however hugo you're up okay so many snakes I am going to blast just, 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 just like ah. <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, sorry, yeah, I'm just you're good. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep <laughs> just gonna keep shooting. Him. Okay, make an attack roll. I keep forgetting that I have two attacks, so I haven't been using my extra attack at all. Well, now you know. Oh my god. Now you do. 17 plus 5. That'll hit. And I'll roll for my other attack. I might as well. Uh, 13 plus 5, that'll which hit. is 18. Yep, that'll hit. Okay, awesome. Both hit. Alright. Nobody throws uh, my friends into a snake pit but me. I'm just gonna <laughs> roll all the damage. Nine plus. Well, nine plus twelve is what? Twenty-one. Then we're gonna do the blinding smile, uh, which is an additional four. So twenty-one plus four is twenty-five. And then we'll pop an arcane jolt. So that's an additional two d six of damage. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Ar uh, Arthur Sin is in for a lot. <laughs> Sorry to this man. Uh, total of 27 damage. Oh. All right, you watch as this creature is frantically looking around, weighing its options. As you level your rifle and zero in on its eye, and you pull the trigger once, and the bullet screams out, and at the last second, the creature turns to look, and it impacts right between the eyes. You watch as the creature kind of, its wings go slack. Its eyes stop glowing red, and it just plummets to the ground. Dead. No more snakes! <laughs> yes, you guys You guys watch as the snakes are slithering around you, and they just evaporate. Uh, I imagine Hugo is, like, holding his gun, being like, with this, I'm a god. And then he starts clenching, and he's like, an angry god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to start spinning with my arms out, because I still have the, the fly spell on. Uh, I'm going to start spinning with my arms out and start slowly lowering to the ground, just so gracefully. All right. As you all kind of collect yourselves, you watch as the darkness <sighs> that was encompassing you slowly begins to disappear. And you see the darkness? The darkness. You see braziers on the ground that weren't visible <gasps> before begin to light up, and they encircle this large oak tree. <gasps> wow! How is this thing getting light down here? You don't know. But you do see the creature off in the corner slowly melting into the ground. Aw, too bad. Leaving behind a small satch, satchel. <gasps> oh my oh. god, it's, I'll fly over to it. <laughs> and some bullets. Yeah. yeah. And some, <laughs> and bullets some, and some hot lead that, that dissipates just, yeah. out of head. Hot lead! <laughs> that just sort of like, they just go tink, 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 tink as they hit the ground. Exactly. That's you can use and make some new bullets with them. Yep. I'll float over to the satchel. We'll just oh. like pick it up. My God, guys! It's his social security card number and all of his credit cards. <laughs> Inside, <laughs> you find a bottle filled with this almost like gray liquid. Hmm. A nice wand. Oh. Two hundred and sixty silver pieces and seventy gold pieces. Wow. Wow. All right. So, who wants the money? Uh, I would like to. Shouldn't we, shouldn't we split it? 
I guess we can split it. How much was it again? 260 oh, silver, to... 70 gold. 70 gold. All right, hold on. There's five of but There's four of us. Hugo asks for the wand. He's like, may I see it? I can identify it. Oh, sure. Here you are. Right, I'm going to spend 10... Oh, divided by... I'm going to spend 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to spend 10 minutes. To All right. Identify. After 10 minutes, you discover this is a wand of magic missiles. Oh, Ooh. Good. This is a wand of magic missiles. We all get... There's one, two, three, four, five. Wait, hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's five of us. Yeah, we have, there's five of us. We all get 14 gold pieces. Okay, 14 gold and then how much silver? 260. So divide that by five. Four. We, uh, uh, Gus Gus. <laughs> I assume huh. Gus Gus is getting a share. Yeah, he gets a share. So 50, oh, okay. 52 silver for everybody. 52 mm -hmm. silver? 52 silver. For 60 uh, silver? 260 two. silver. 260 silver, got it. 260 silver? Yeah, divided by five is... Uh, I closed the calculator. 52. 52, yeah. You each get 52 silver? 52 silver, and what? how much gold did you say? 15? 14. 14. 14. Gus, Gus, would you like this wand? <gasps> Yes, he's a little like a raccoon. His little like mouse hand is just like reaching out of my skull, trying to grab it. <laughs> got little grabby hands. Yeah, you got your grabby hands. Okay, buddy, I'll put it in the bag of holding. We'll keep it for later. Oh, I accidentally put that fifty-two gold in Electrum. Oops. <sighs> fifty-two. I'm just gold, gonna start. Mean silver. Silver. Yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna start putting my arms up and like as if I'm like Peter Pan on like a stage play being hoisted by wires. I'm just going to take up the wall and start flying Mar around the room. Mars is still just kind of floating. He doesn't really... Yeah. He's horrified. Doesn't really lasts, know how to get down. It lasts... Uh, wait, how long does this spell last? Ten minutes. <laughs> Help me down. I'm going to look around. Make sure there's nothing else that is a threat. Make a perception check. You know how Sora flies in Kingdom Hearts 1? I rolled... 16. Perception. Oh, with like his like legs out? Yeah, that's pretty much me right now. All right. With 16, you do see about three or four bodies of yun -ti that are just eviscerated. Oh. You also see circling the tree are beds all the way around, maybe 30 or 40 beds that just line around the tree. Oh, I must have lived here. Hmm. Oh, wait, no, this is where they commune with their god. Yeah. They, because it's a dream god, so they must come here to sleep and dream. Oh, that's cute. But it seems clear now. And the, the tree, you see that it was kind of withered, begins to slowly reconstitute itself. The leaves turn green once more, the bark gets healthy. <laughs> and you see the braziers begin to go from a dull red to a vibrant white. Hmm. Here we are. All right. So, what would I'll you sit like up in do? the branches of the. I'll sit up in the branches of the tree. I'm gonna go knock on the door that, that they locked us. You know. Yeah. Do you guys see what I posted in the Discord? The flying nun. The flying nun. <laughs> <laughs> are you helping me down? No. <laughs> Please. It's fine, Mars. Just think happy thoughts. Just go where you want to go. There are no happy thoughts here. <laughs> Mars, you are very fearful. But Hugo, you knock on, yeah. Hugo, you knock <laughs> on the door and it slowly opens and you see a couple heads poke through <clears throat> with wrenches and looks like work implements ref retrofitted as weapons. They kind of lean in and they see the fire, they see the tree, and you see them take a deep sigh of relief. And you see the leader enter and he just does a deep bow and he says, we... We have your eternal gratitude. Eternal. Or you, don't you mean you have our? Yeah. Eternal <laughs> yes. He goes. You have our eternal gratitude. No. He, <laughs> you are gratitude. No. <laughs> Poor choice of words. You're welcome. <laughs> he, he got a lean and says, "Get the cobalt. Tell him he can come in." <gasps> yes. And they go, but truly, we are thankful. We have not been able to dream for some time, but now. Once, once we 
bury the dead, we will be able to once more slumber. Oh yeah, we kind of look over it. There's just corpses piled up in the corner. There's about four bodies, not that many. Turn to mush. He goes, it's most likely a servant of Dendar, but we have not worshipped them for such a time. So we are unfamiliar with his servants. It's servants. All right. Well, very good then. He goes, and you. Uh, after a few minutes, you see pockets come up, already scrawling on this large map, or not map, large. Uh, what's the word I look for? Large parchment, and he's just sketching, and he goes, but a deal's a deal, and he reaches into one of his many pockets, and he pulls out a small map, and he says, this is the location of Iron Solutions in the warehouse district. I knew it! I knew they Dude. were here! Yeah, you all knew that. Yes, you <laughs> did. <laughs> but he goes, but I'd be careful. They've been bolstering their forces for some time. That's fine. So they can bolster all their Yeah. You'd be well, surprised how, with a little bit of makeup and wigs, how doesn't matter how bolstered your forces in, anyone can kind of slip in. He goes, well, just be careful. I assume I'm going to begin mapping the oasis. Uh, do as you wish, and he just leaves and begins mapping and mapping and mapping. Just drawing I'm go, quickly. I'm going to go over to the the big yaunty guy. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to <laughs> look, I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna like stand next to him and kind of like stand next to him and kind of face the kobold. And I'll be like, he's adorable, isn't he? He goes, he is quite small. Yes, he's quite little. You know, but uh, I think he's single, so if you want to make your move, go right ahead. He just kind of shoots you a look of confusion. <laughs> I saw the way you were looking at him. <laughs> make, a, make a deception check. <laughs> or is it deception or persuasion? Persuasion. <laughs> You're trying to, to convince this Yohanji that he's so <laughs> Sp- right, Deception or persuasion? Uh, your choice. I'll do persuasion. 28. 28. He goes, yes, my, my wife and children would find him very fondly. Oh. <laughs> okay, so, just depressed now. Hi. Wow. Ooh. God. <clears throat> I'm kind of going to like put my hand on his... Like, try to, like, brace myself on, like, his frame. Kind of, like, holding myself up, like, uh, uh-huh. like I just got punched in the gut. I'm like, wow, okay, uh, cool. Ooh. Uh, hmm. Hey, guys, we gotta go. Uh, I think I, uh, uh Gus Gus is, uh, Gus Gus is, he's, he's gotta go to church. Uh, we, we gotta go, okay? I'm just gonna start, like, I'm, uh, yeah. Just, Gus Gus <laughs> decided to, to, to follow me in. On the path of worshipping Mira? Sure. Yeah, sure. Whatever. My son. <laughs> you gotta, gotta leave. All right. It was, it was great helping you all. It was very nice, you know, helping you, uh, you know, tell the wife and kids I said hello, send them my regards. Uh, that was really great. Uh, hey, pockets, uh, finger guns. I'm like, make, uh, open up maps. Really nice. Because that's what I do. And you can see he's uh-huh. just he's just sitting cross legged on the ground just drawing. God. Oh. Okay, come on guys. Let's, let's leave. <laughs> Hugo goes Octavian, you need to go to church. I don't need to go to church. No, I'm not allowed in. You honestly believe I wouldn't immediately catch fire if I walked into a place. I actually don't believe that. Mm-mm. No. Thank you. All right, so you guys head back to the surface. Yes, All I right. mean you're friends with me, so you probably wouldn't like immediately catch fire. Maybe only yeah. after. Maybe like your clothes would get a couple sparks, but like yeah, well, that would look cool though. Add a whole new definition to the word flamer. <laughs> <laughs> Octavian, that's just not how religion works, isn't it? No, you don't just. Just because you're undead doesn't mean you walk into a church. 
Hugo, I've been to a lot of fundamentalist temples. I'm pretty sure I know how religion works. Sinners immediately catch fire and are condemned to the nine hells. (laughs) It depends on the god. Well, okay. Uh, All right. So you make your way back up to the surface. It it wasn't that it didn't take you that long to dispatch the creature and do your business down there. So it's about noon. Let's go to the warehouse district. Let's. Will you take a look at the map? Yeah, let's take a look at the map. Look at the map. What languages do you all speak? I speak common, elvish, and telepathic. Can I telepathically read the map? (laughs) No. It's not a living thing. (laughs) I speak common and loxodon. Okay. I speak celestial and common. Okay. And Thorhenge? Thorhenge speaks. Scrolling down. Elvish and Sylvan. All right. None of you. The map is just basic shapes and with road, with street names and all that, but the names are written in a language you don't understand. Uh, Hugo sighs, goes back down to the ONT, goes back to find pockets. He goes, Oh, uh, can I help you? I don't understand any of this. He goes, oh, it's, I'm sorry, I, it's written in Draconic. I, I just assume everybody can read it. Oh, God. Oh, ooh. Oh, you just assume. He goes, uh. please translate. <laughs> he goes, he goes, give me a moment. And he begins scribbling, and you see he begins filling in the names and putting them in common. And this goes, is oh. Oslo. We speak Draconic here. Filthy foreigners. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> he, he, do you say this out loud? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, because I was going to say. He goes, I, I apologize. I write in Draconic. That way people can't steal my maps and use them against me. <laughs> oh, or you're mark so them. smart. So, you're so adorable. Patch but, it. Uh, he translates it and writes it in common, and he does apologize. No, Pocket. He, and one, once again, he says, just be careful. Maybe we can have some late night study sessions, Pocket. You can teach me some Draconic. Oh, my goodness. Hugo just walks away at that point. He just walks away. All right. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give. Uh, I'm gonna give pa- a pocket. I want to call him Patches, but I'm gonna give Pockets a nice big hug and be like, "All right, we'll be. We'll. We'll. We'll see you later." Okay. He goes. Uh, well, I'm at the casino. If you ever need me okay. to make a map, Goodbye. that's what Goodbye. I do. All right. So you guys head back to the surface, looking at the I map. I can't believe you flirted with a married man. I do it all the time. Come on, please. Once I found out he was married, I stopped, okay? It's not like I pursued it any further. God. All right. Don't be a home record. So, you take a look at the now translated map. And you see it is a map of the basic gist of the warehouse district. The Each warehouse labeled 1 through up till 42. Mm. And you see scribbled... In Draconic and now in Common, it says, uh, uh, Iron Solutions, Avoid at All Costs, Warehouse 36. Ah, yes. Yes, right. Avoid at All Costs. We need to find that street. It is on Hope Street. I walk over to the um, the, the nearest civilian. Okay. Excuse me, can you point me in the direction of Avoid at All Costs Street? Or maybe it's an avenue, or is it a road? <laughs> she kind of looks at you with her basket of fruit and says, oh, "What?" Uh, I'm sorry, I was reading your map. Um, apparently, it said avoid at all costs. A warehouse. It's in the warehouse district. I'm assuming. She goes. I'm not familiar with a street named Avoid at All Cost. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Mars Thank takes you. the map and is just like. What's the actual street name? It's Hope Street. We're looking for Hope Street. We're all looking for Hope, Mars, but we need to find the street and avoid at all costs. Does the lady recognize Uh, Hope Street? She goes, yes. Uh, And she gives you basic directions to get there. You lied to me? (laughs) I turned to her. You see that she started to walk away with her bundle of fruit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you better turn tail and run. <laughs> oh my God, it's like Octavian. <laughs> Hold to yourself. I'm, 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 uh, 
I think maybe we should scout the place out. That, that yes, that is the good yes, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yes. However, we should do it incognito. Costumes, fun costumes. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Why? They won't suspect anything, and no amount of magic can peer through a costume. That's true, I suppose, but... Yes! <laughs> they don't know our faces, so... No, well, we're put on makeup. It's fine. We'll wear makeup. But they okay. don't know our faces. Exactly, and they still won't once we wear the makeup. It could be helpful if any of them get away so that we're not getting assaulted. True. I hmm. guess. Should we maybe take a rest? I mean, they don't know we're coming, so we could no, just we're rest. Not, we're not there to interact with them. We still need we're... to plan. We just need to True. see what their operation looks like. Yeah. That's... Well, give me a moment. Um, I will uh, put together a, a nice facade, and we can make our way o over there so that they won't suspect anything. All right. I'm going to go into an alleyway, take out. There's no one around, is there? Make a perception check. S seven. Seven. You see a couple commoners, a couple hard, you know, laborers just pushing carts and such, but the alley seems deserted. All right. Um, I'm going to run into the back alley. If I see those guys, I'm going to run into the back alley and be like, my God, I have a horrible, horrible bout of diarrhea. I d everyone make it. Oh, get out of the way. <laughs> make a deception check. <laughs> oh 30. God. Oh, my God. Okay. So you see people like... Uh, uh, and they like start pushing their carts faster. The commoners who were just, you know, maybe grocery shopping, like avert their gaze, putting their hands up, like, I don't want to see that. And they begin running away. Okay. <laughs> All right. Did someone shit themselves. <laughs> All right. I'm going to duck behind a box and take the next few minutes to use my disguise kit to put together a disguise. Okay. What are you disguising yep. yourself as? Uh,. Tina Telev Tina Televangelista. I'm gonna rise up. I look like like a I look like a like a southern uh, realtor woman. I've got like a pantsuit on with like shoulder pads and like that kind of like very very has a lot of work done in their hair kind of hairdo. Like it you you know it could probably take a bullet and it and it would probably like break a piece off with how much like uh, stuff uh, I have in my hair. Yeah, with the amount of product I got in my hair. <laughs> And just a, a little bit too much makeup. Like, I don't understand the concept of less is more. All right. Businesswoman extraordinaire. Hello, yes. My name is <sighs> Tina Televangelista. Hey, who are you talking to? <laughs> I'm uh, just uh, walking up to the to the party. <laughs> to everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he goes squinting his eyes and is just like trying not to laugh i'm a business realtor <laughs> so i heard you <clears throat> so i heard you boys were in the market of getting some warehouses to store all of your product <laughs> you guys is just like hands in so, face so who's this so who's this woman exactly octavian <laughs> i'm tina televangelista businesswoman realtor extraordinaire Here's my card. I'll press a digitate a card in my hand and like slip it over to you. It's a, it's just a square piece of paper with her face on it, and then it just dissipates eventually because <laughs> it's not a real card. <laughs> a minor illusion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. Let's get you boys one of them warehouses. I have just the place. Excuse me, sir. I'll walk up to a random person. You, you see one of the laborers just kind of like shoveling mud. He's like, uh, what do you want? Tina Tale Evangelista, hi. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm looking for the warehouse district. If you could be so kind and point me in the direction. I'll like, hand him a card. He gestures and says, you're in the warehouse district. 
oh, we're in the rare house stretch. Oh, silly me. I put a lot of product in my hair. Kind of, you know, plays with my head a little. <laughs> Thank you. Could you point me in the direction of Hope Street? He goes, yeah, it's just on the other side of those buildings. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> I'm in high heels, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So All right. The rest of us not getting costumes. Do you, would you like some costumes as well? I do not. I do not. <laughs> oh, come on, please. At least like a hat or something. Oh, here. I have another mask. Would you like to wear the mask? No. Oh, fine. It looks like a robot. <laughs> I am going. <laughs> we are just scouting. Fine. Mm. If you are going to interact, I will be at a distance and scope them out. Okay, cool. Mars, would you like a costume as well? I suppose it'd probably be better than nothing. All right. I, yeah. We did kind of cause it. The other than Hugo, we did kind of cause a scene. We yesterday. Did. We'll just, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, cover it all up. I will go into my disguise kit and see if I can make you kind of the best, like, looking, like, business entrepreneur looking Lexodon. Loxodon, I can. Got a 29 in deception with my disguise kit. All right. Yeah. Put, like, a little mustache at the end of your trunk. Big bushy Stop eyebrows. Doing. Stop doing that. I put the Why? mustache on your eyebrow. Why? Where would it? Oh my god! Please, my makeup. Where would this mustache go? <laughs> oh, Loxodon don't have mustaches. Full goatee, mustache, and beard on the tip of your trunk. <laughs> Loxodon don't have facial hair. What about big luscious eyelashes? No, the suit I is enough. Know. All right. Um. That the war hinge. Do you want to be dressed up as well? No. <laughs> Alright, fine. I never want to dress up. I am perfect as is. What about a little bit of contour on the eye? No. Okay. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of some lipstick for the beak? I will send you to Jesus. Okay, fine. Who's Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whoever that guy is. Yeah. <laughs> what if we just paint your talons? Can we paint your talons? No, I will slice you. Oh, fine. All right, boys. Let me just yeah. show you this way to this warehouse. I'll get Thorhenge the map. Thorhenge is nothing for pampering or just dressing up. He oh, is fine. an all-natural bird. Oh, Gus Gus is also in a business outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just sitting on your shoulder now? Yes, he, he'll, he's in my hair. <laughs> All right. So... You emerge onto Hope Street. He's just like, Father, I've gotten a job. Yes. He's a realtor, just like me. You arrive onto Hope Street. Yes. Following the directions, you find Warehouse 32. Ah, uh, yes. Or is it 36? I think it's 32, right? No, which one was it? It was 36. Yes. 36. So, All right, boys. So we have this warehouse right here. Uh, it's a quite fine one. A um, lot of space. Let me just get my... I'm going to start fumbling with fake keys. You see the <laughs> door? The, the large drawn door to the warehouse is slightly open. Mm -hmm. And there are three men sitting out front just leaning against the wall talking amongst themselves. And as you approach, they kind of like adjust themselves and they begin to approach you. Hi. Hello. Tina Televangelista. Oh. Logan, as this is happening, I'm going to a warehouse across. Okay. Is it empty? Uh, one of the warehouses, it looks, it's got a for sale sign, so you can assume it is empty. All right, so I'm just going to go in there, act like I belong in there, and just, like, go to the top floor and just get a bird's eye view. Okay. Easily enough, you, the door is unlocked. You enter a large empty space with a staircase to the left. You ascend it to what looks like some offices with some windows that just give you a perfect vantage point over the street. People are working. You take one of the desks, boost it to the window, <laughs> well, no, it's... take everything off and set up a sniper. <laughs> it's <just> not... <laughs> it's empty. It's, it's, it's yeah. empty and it's for sale. So there's no Tell them on your business, everyone. Don't mind me. Oh, it's <laughs> All right. They walk up. They're like, one of them has a coffee mug. He's like, 
Tina Vella, Tina Tana, Tina Televangelista. Yeah, I fucking hate that bitch. Take the shot. <laughs> <laughs> so you take up a sniper. Position. Octavian, Thorhand, and Mars, you watch as one of the goons kind of approaches you and says, uh, what do you want? Hi, ah, yes, Tina Televangelista. I was just showing these fine gentlemen uh, one of my properties that I have for sale. I'm a realtor. He goes, then why are you coming near our warehouse? Honey, this warehouse is for sale. Make a deception check. <laughs> 23. Oh, 23. hold on. I have advantage on deception checks when I'm pretending to be someone else. <laughs> oh my god. 27. 27 total? Yeah. He kind of looks to you and he says, it's not for sale. Leave. Honey. Sweetheart. Yes, it is. I have the deed right here. Hold on one moment. And I'll start. I'll stick my hand into my hair. Okay, he just. You see, he's got his hand on a sword at his side. Yeah. I'll pull the deed out of my wig. I'm just. While it's in there, I'm casting Minor Illusion in my hand okay. and pulling the deed out. A Minor Illusion deed. See, it's right here. He kind of <sighs> leans in and he goes to grab it. I'll stuff it in my cleavage because I don't have cleavage and it's not there because it's not a real uh, okay. thing. So when I stuff it in my cleavage, it's going to dissipate. You see, he kind of straightens but, up you know. and says, the boss, I don't think the boss was selling the warehouse anytime soon. So I'm going to ask you again to leave. Hold on one moment. I'll pull the uh, uh, listing out again. The boss, it says right here. Um, and I'm going to turn the, the deed over and show the name. Arthur Sin, that was the, that, that was the signing name. Yes. He kind of like looks a little confused. And you see him walk back to his group of, of cohorts and they begin talking. Every now and then looking back at you until he comes back and says, it's, uh, he likes stumbling for words. And he's like, what What do you want? You, you just want to look inside? Yes, we're just going to take a look inside. I'm going to show them around, show them all the like nice features and things. And then we'll uh, be out of your hair and you can, you know, talk it up with the boss. But I have the deed right here goes well the boss isn't here but i i guess i can let you inside for a couple of seconds oh it's fine it's fine no problem if, at he, all. if he's selling the property i don't want to get on his bad side yes here and because you're being a good sport um i'll hand him one of my cards tina televangelista i'm one of the best realtors in the city if you're looking for like a really i usually only work in business but if you want like there's some new like really nice houses that are relatively cheap in the upper districts just in case you're wondering he goes, that, that'd be great. Uh, yes. But uh, no, let me let me take you inside. And he, you see, he kind of relaxes a bit. He goes over oh, the door. To the two other guys, I'll be like, so what do you guys do around here? They go, uh, we just keep the warehouse safe. Oh, a little bit of muscle. Okay. <laughs> but eventually, the, you see the other guard, the one you were talking to, walk over to the door and knock in a specific pattern before it opens up. Oh, all right. I'll t psychically tell Gus, Gus, write that down, write that down. <laughs> you just hear scribbling on the side of your skull. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but he goes this way. Uh, just keep your hands to yourself and don't wander off. Oh, we won't touch anything, honey, unless it wants to be touched. And you all filter into the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> it's a large warehouse, maybe 50 feet tall and a couple hundred feet long. Mm. And you can see inside it's empty, except for in the back, a large throne with a bear, a throne. oddly enough, sleeping by it. God. A bear? A bear, yes. Oh my God, a bear. A, let me see, a black bear. <laughs> wow, a bear. I will use my... Um... Silver tongue. Sorry, not silver tongue. Um, where? Universal speech. Okay. Uh, as an action, choose up to five creatures within 60 feet of you. The chosen creature can magically understand you, regardless of the language you speak, for okay. one hour. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what would you like to say? I'll be like, hi, bear! 
You see it kind of rouses from its slumber with one eye open, just scanning the oh room. Oh my goodness, you're such a handsome bear. You're so cute. I was unaware that this... So apparently, I know I told you boys that there were no pets allowed, but apparently I was incorrect. I assure you, that doesn't happen often. Hi, bear! <laughs> Are you saying hi, bear, out loud? Yes, I'm saying it to the bear. You see the guard like, no, 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 don't, no. So he hasn't eaten in a while. Don't, don't tempt him. It's okay. Come here, bear. You see it begin to lumber over to you, and it's quite large. Oh, God. I'm going to make a persuasion check. Make a persuasion I'd rather check. not fight a bear. I'd lead over to Octavia. It's, I'm going to just, like, it's fine. It's fine. Hi, bear. How are you doing? Do they treat you right? Do they treat you good? And we just got his uh, underneath his, uh, his chin. As you go to reach out, he kind of just growls at you. Oh, it's okay. Can I do like persuasion ch- or animal? It's like, uh, make well, it, he can understand me, so it's persuasion. Make a persuasion check. Um, I'm not going to hurt you, buddy. I would never, I, I cross my heart, that doesn't exist, and hope to die. I would never hurt a beautiful creature such as you. Make a persuasion 28. 28. <laughs> it kind of like lowers its head and allows you to pet it but it's mm-hmm. you can still feel that as you pet it you feel the tenseness in its body as it's it's ready for anything i will telepathically tell the bear i can give you so much i can ascend your mind to a level in which you would never comprehend prior i can give you abilities unlike any other all that i ask is that you trust me. You kind of just you say this. You, you think this. I'm telepathically, you, you telepathically telling it to the bear. You say it in your head. And I can send you hear mind. back. <gasps> you hear back uh, in a grumbly voice. You hear, uh, there's nothing you can offer me. And it turns <gasps> and walks away. It already has it. It's already, you can already speak telepathically. Yes. Oh my god, this is the most this is the greatest day of my life. And he watches I it can, lumbers back over to the throne, lays back down and goes back to sleep. I can offer you friends, family, and freedom. But you go back to sleep. You need to get your beauty sleep. Alright, boys. I know I said there were no animals allowed, but that bear, absolutely adorable. Granted, the bear doesn't come with the warehouse, I'm sorry to tell. But I think the throne in the back might. The last time I checked, I'll pull out the fake deed, uh, the the magical deed. I didn't see throne on here, so that might be going with when they move eventually. Yes, but a lot of space for events, but also a lot of space for holding, you know, a lot of material and stuff like that. Um, excuse me, I'll say to the guy. <laughs> Just for an example, just to tell my friend, what kind of stuff do you hold here normally? You know, huh. to keep in stock. Uh, he goes, just, you know, vegetables and fruits. Ooh, vegetables and fruits. A lot of room for produce. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I'm going to say to the man... Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to say to the man, or no, I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell, uh, Hugh, uh, to Hugo, because Hugo knows Gios now, doesn't he? I do. Hugo? Oh, no, no sorry, not Hugo, Mar- you tell Mars with te- telepathically. You know Gios now, right? Yes, I believe... I believe so. I haven't had the opportunity to test it yet. Well, I think this is the perfect opportunity. Follow my lead. I'm going to walk over to the man. Could you give us the full and complete tour of the establishment? All the nooks and crannies? He goes, I I don't know if that's a good idea. The boss, oh, maybe when the boss please. gets back, he can take you on a tour. But Oh, no, that's not fun. I don't want to bother your boss. He's probably very busy. Or they are. She is. You I don't can really see him quite start know. to sweat. Oh, please. And I'm going to whisper in his ear with my, um, uh, my unsettling words. You wouldn't want to piss him off now, would you? Your boss can be quite, you know, from what I've heard, can be quite dangerous when he's aggravated. 
And that is the when when I'm going to telepathically tell uh, Mars. Okay, tell him to give us the full tour now. All right, I. Wouldn't he become aware that? Yes, I, but he am must. I him? He has to comply, or else it will start to kill him. Luckily, I didn't use up all my fifth level spell slots. <laughs> okay, then he's got to. He's got to do a, a constitution or a wisdom save. All right. He has to. He has to subtract a six from that roll. Let me open up his character sheet. What kind of roll? Uh, wisdom. Do, 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 do. He got a total of... Uh, oh, and what do I have to subtract? Six. He rolled a natural 20. Minus six, Ooh. so 14. Oh, that... Oh, lucky. You got lucky. He kind of goes... Wait, all right, then I just kind of lean in and just go... I would greatly appreciate it if you gave us the full tour, imbuing my magic into the last part of the phrase. Oh, right. Now, what happens if he just, if he does not do what he's told? If he does not do what he t he's told, I think he takes psychic damage constantly until it either until he complies or it kills um, him. Yeah. It takes 5d10 of psychic damage each time it acts in a manner directly counter to your instructions. Holy shit. <laughs> How much? 5d10. All right, roll the 5d10 as he's like, I, I, I can't do that. <laughs> Holy shit. One, two, three, four, five. Twenty damage. Oh my god. <laughs> he goes, I can't and you see the nose you see he gets a nosebleed and he goes, I I can't and then he falls forward dead. Oh, Holy Jesus shit. Christ. Uh, uh, you see the, uh, the bear the bear kinda like you see its ears perk up and it like like stares you both down. He he died. <laughs> he just dropped dead. What the fuck? His nose is bleeding. What just happened? I'll just say to the bear telepathically, <laughs> what happened? He just died. <laughs> what does your boss do to people? Logan, yes. can I, from where my, where I'm sitting, <laughs> is there are windows in their warehouse as well? Can I see what's going on inside? You or? can see uh, on the second floor there is offices, but you cannot actually see into the building. <laughs> okay. You well, see that they're doing over there. there were some workers around who kind of like turned like, and starts staring like, wh what? He Wait. just died. He just dropped dead. <laughs> you watch as they begin what? to approach with weapons drawn like, what? what's going no, on look! here? His nose started bleeding and he just fucking died. Did he overdose on something? Is he, did he take drugs? You see them roll him over and begin to like shake him like, hey, come on, wake up. And he's not waking up. His here, eyes are on, open one, 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 one. and he's just got blood pouring out of his nose. My God. What the fuck? Do you need me to? I'll say to the guys. Do you need me to call up like the guards or? They're like no, 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 no guards, no, no guards. Uh, but I think it is time you left, and they open the door and they begin to push you out. Okay. As the bear comes over and begins to sniff the corpse. Bear, I'll say telepathically. I'll be like, "Is, is he gonna be okay, bear?" You don't hear anything back. Oh. But you do get ushered out into the street. The other two guards who are waiting outside kind of like look to you like, uh, and then you see the, some of the workers like, come in quickly. And they both usher in and shut the door and lock it behind them. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> I start cackling inside Mars's mind going, good, Anakin, good. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe I just murdered someone. I can't believe you just murdered someone with... Psychic persuasion. I'm so proud of you. I can't even do that. That was kind of scary. It was. It was thrilling. No, but just like <laughs> Mars is, you look over at Mars and he's legitimately gone pale. We've got to work on that, Mars. We've got to. We've got to find. You did a good job. That just. I think you kind of overpowered. That you have to remember to. 
remember, when you charm someone or you say a spell like that, it's always good to make them believe that it's their idea that they're doing it. The charm is just there to reassure that they do it. But you want to convince them that it's their idea. You were a little bit too blunt. It gave him the ability to disagree with you, you know, which is probably what led to him <laughs> hemorrhaging and dying on a mental scale. So we'll practice. It's all about wordcraft. The next time you tell someone to do something, just be very... It's the, the spell itself is persuasive, but you must also be persuasive. Okay. So you're all back in the street. Uh, Hugo, you yeah. see them emerge, and the other guards go inside. Yeah, yeah he, goes, he goes over. If I start yelling, do you think they can hear me from inside? Yes, easily. My God, this is the second time this week. Why does every time I take people, clients, to go see a new building, someone dies? <laughs> Last week it was the swarm of giant eagles that carried that man off to his death. And now a man just fucking ODs and drops dead. God, I gotta get out of this fucking realtor business. I knew mom said I should have became a nun, but dear lord. Ugh. I assure you, I assure you, this is not normal. And that had, that had completely nothing to do with the property. It was just a freak accident. Okay. Perhaps we should just move on. I think, you know what? Let me make it up to you. I'll take you out to lunch. And we'll begin. I'll start ushering everyone okay. away from the from the warehouse. Okay. Okay, so. You guys you go, get uh, the away. Uh, well, Hugo, uh, let me just say that I'm very proud of Mars. He did a great job. He's taken after me a little bit. He tried his hand at some enchantment magic and charmed just a little bit too hard and killed a man. Um, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but they have no idea that it's me. There's also a telepathic bear inside. Just going to put that out there. What? Yeah. What? And there's a tel that bear was telepathic. We spoke telepathically. So the bear has intelligence. Yes, my god. I'm obsessed with that bear now. Are you sure that that is a bear? It could be something else. It could be... <gasps> it could be a dragon. <gasps> it could be a dragon disguised as a bear! Using telep telepathy to talk to me! <gasps> it's a bear dragon! A or baggin! It could, or it could just be a shapeshifter. Or For all we fucking... know, that could have been Arthur Sin. It could have been Arthur Sin. <gasps> Arthurson's a furry? <laughs> What's a furry? I don't oh, know what that is. But it's a group of... Yeah, whatever. I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> go and plan things. Yes. Let's go to the nearest lunch spot. Gus, Gus, Apologies, Gus, but... I... I'm going to need to spend the rest of the evening fasting and praying. Okay. Um, I've murdered a man in cold blood. You can pray and fast at the table. I, I think I need to be alone. Yes, I think I need to be alone. I'll. Fine. As contradictory as it may seem, I think I'll go back to the casino, and That's just cool. pray. We'll accompany you. Come on, everyone. All I guess right. we'll have oh, lunch no. at the casino. Is no, there a restaurant at the casino? Yes, there's a, there's many restaurants. All right, I'll take them to one of the restaurants at the casino. All right. And that is where we'll end it for today. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm so proud of you, Mars. <laughs> so <laughs> proud of you. I mean, you fucked it up. Actually, no, you really didn't fuck it up. You, you did the spell perfectly, and it worked. It's just he went against what you said and died as a result. <laughs> yes, I'm honestly surprised that he had such little health. Right? <laughs> like, what the hell was a guard at this level play? doing with that low health well he's probably yeah. just a grunt he's just a low level grunt yeah <laughs> <sighs> all right also hey guys uh just a heads up um uh, so because i'm starting i uh, 
I'm going with the campaign I'm hosting on my local end. Uh -huh. um, there's a day that I have to give up for playing as a player in uh, one of your campaigns. And that's either the Friday ones or the Saturday ones. Okay. I mean... Okay. okay. Um, but I'm not sure which one to choose. And I will say that the, the session that I have, that I'm hosting, happens bi-weekly. So I have every other Friday off. Friday and or Saturday? Uh, Fridays, er, every other Friday, I host a campaign for my uh, local end. But uh -huh. there's other Fridays that I have off to play a campaign.